Uh, hello. Uh, today we're starting our live stream. Uh, always a uh, uh, tribute to uh, Saskatchewan uh, youth hockey team uh, that unfortunately got an accident uh, last Saturday. And uh, now 16 young men uh, and uh, bus driver as well as uh, their trainer and a journalist lost their lives. Um, today, lots of schools across Canada uh, from one border to another, from east to west coast, are wearing uh, different hockey jerseys to support um, um, Humboldt Broncos team, um, parents, all those who were involved um, and not suffered uh, from this crash. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome. We're starting our uh, Wednesday Wisdom live stream. I'm just going to uh, open everything up here. I don't know if we had the picture open. Um, welcome. Thank you guys for coming. I hope you guys have a, a really great day. And I uh, hope everything is all good. It's kind of a somber message that we start off with tonight, but what we feel is an important one. Um, oh. um, yeah, I, um, if you live in Canada, you probably have heard the story about this team. Uh, and probably even if you don't, um, uh, the story of these young men have uh, gone across. Even uh, Donald Trump has, uh, you know, said uh, his support and uh, Queen Elizabeth. And yeah. So it has hit uh, people across the board and us as parents. So um, for sure it has touched uh, yeah. Um, so it's, we just wanted to remember them. It's a very sad story. Um, it's especially like Exina said, when you're a parent, see young men like that. And yes, it did happen a couple of days ago, but, um, you know, anybody who has kids, anything like that, of course, makes you hug them just a little bit tighter. So um, sorry to start off on this note, but we really thought it was uh, something important to touch on too. Yeah, and lots of schools joined today uh, yeah. in the same day wearing the jerseys uh, of different teams to support them. So just hug your uh, loved ones closer, uh, give a kiss to your child. Yep, mm -hmm. that's right. And uh, and we'll uh, start off. Yep, yeah. and then he's got her jersey on. This is from Latvia. Yeah. Uh, here, I bring the camera down so you don't lose your wrong boy. Yeah, my jersey today is from Latvia. Uh, it's uh, Latvia is the country that I come from, <laughs> and this is our Olympic uh, Games uh, jersey. Thank you, mm. uh, which is in our flag colors with uh, Latvia's uh, co what is it? Coat of arms is called. Yeah, coat of arms on top of it. Um, Actually, this is Andrew's jersey. <laughs> yeah, it's the first he thing got I ever it. bought myself when I. Uh... Yeah, he got it when I. I don't know what's in the back even. Uh, he got it <laughs> yeah. uh, when uh, uh, he visited uh, me in Latvia. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Uh, Halos is asking. Oh, uh, uh, Saline Scott. Yes, I I understand completely. Uh, I can't be on YouTube all the time and things to do, but thank you so much for stopping by. It's always uh, it's, it's really nice to have you here. Uh, Hales and uh, Heathens was asking because they missed the beginning story. Uh, we, since they already heard this part, I guess just tell them quickly about it and all. Uh... Uh, yeah, uh, we just uh, paid a, a few second a minute tribute uh, to the Humboldt Broncos uh, hockey team, a youth hockey team uh, that got into an accident on Saturday on the way to their game. And unfortunately, now confirmed 16 people, uh, most of them young men, 16, 18, lost their lives. Yeah. and 14 were injured um, so today is the day where all the schools across uh, Canada are supporting them by wearing different jerseys yeah. uh, and not just schools uh, workplaces as well so we just decided to join this effort mm -hmm. um, healthy oh. trails 199 hi we're going to proceed with our <laughs> with our stream we are launching our channel on a live stream on Monday night oh that's great we're sister channel to happy trails hiking that's awesome. Yes, Love to see that. Uh, That's what I thought. We already are subscribed. So. Yeah. Uh, just let us know what time. And hopefully it's not at 8 p.m. Eastern because mm -hmm. that's when we are going to be on. Yeah. And by the way, this Monday we are going to be having Manic Monday with That's lots right. of 
fun people yeah. talking all music and guitars. Yep. Uh, oh my God, it's going to be so much fun. Yep. So before or after, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that would be awesome. Uh, One uh, side note, um, a gentleman we were planning to have on in the near future, he's actually going to be on tomorrow night is somebody you all know very well a big champion for the i'm creator movement and plus his own uh, streams the guy is a he's got an energy we're the complete opposite of his channel where he's got the tons and tons of energy we're more like that cup of coffee at the end of the evening yes <laughs> so we're gonna be having verdict squad on we're really excited to have him i uh i was in his channel tonight and um i said i would make a little apology to him because this is something that i wouldn't have liked either uh, you'll notice with YouTube tonight, and please keep a, a check for our show as well. If you see snow and uh, video unavailable, that is happening. And just refresh. We will still be here till 10 as always. Yeah. Um, I didn't realize that they were done. I had typed in. He's pretty good, and I always invite him too. Like, you know, to message about their live stream, no problem. But I went working on ours to get it set up and didn't realize because theirs was snowy. I thought he went off the air. I must have been clicking something and ended up posting it like a bunch of times. Got back there and found out I had been uh, blocked for 300 seconds, rightfully so. And then uh, when I got back on, I got to explain to him. And I mean, Verdict Squad's a really cool guy, and I, I appreciate it. So, yeah, always be, always be conscious, because we had a gentleman last night, uh, like uh, Mr. Peter, Peter Cockrum, I think. Yes, yeah. yeah. And his was all doing, like, in double types and stuff like that. It's, it happens. Yeah. It was by accident, and uh, yeah. it happens. We all have I felt really bad, especially because we do have yeah. a channel, and we always try to take the high road. I knew when I started talking about Xenia's looking over like, oh, he's not going to talk about it again. But I really do care about stuff like that. Um, I would want the same respect for our channel as well. I am. Um, so, and just also to be aware of that. So watch the channels tonight, because a lot of them are going in and out, and it wasn't just ours, because once that was all finished, I've seen other people ready too that they were getting snow and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, just refresh it and it should yeah. be fine. Uh, so, so, but uh, that's a common glitch tonight. Yeah, exactly. Welcome, guys. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, yeah, yeah, Saturday yeah, night. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, I just wanted to mention that Saturday night we're going to be uh, having a family friendly uh, guest. Uh, so, if you want to watch it with your family, uh, for our kids, if you have any, yeah. uh, that's going to be something awesome. I'm yeah. not going to announce who yet, yeah. but I can tell you that it's family friendly and it's going to be lots of fun. Definitely. Um, okay, so back to our awesome community here. Uh, we'll start right from the start. Da -da -da -da. Uh, okay, so Sal and Scott had to come in and run away. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but thank you for coming. Uh, happy trails hiking, as I was saying. Mars from Michigan. Bottle caps. Hi, hello. Glad to see you from the start. Halos and heathens. Hi. Uh, um, hi again. Uh, seeing you today already, <laughs> but hi again. Um, healthy trails, as I was saying as well. JD Diva. Hello. Nice to see you. Uh, Bobby Situ. Hello. Nice to see you too. Terrell Emerson. Hi, you've been such amazing uh, regular viewer mm -hmm. of our live stream. That's so cool. We were just talking about you last night about that after the stream was done. Yes. <laughs> Uh, that's amazing to see. I, I love seeing uh, old faces and the new ones, both for different reasons. Uh, Bobby C2 uh, is coming in and out. That's okay. UP4204. I'm, I I so want to call you the E. <laughs> Wally E. I don't know. <laughs> yes, folks, it's going to happen again tonight. <laughs> I'm sorry. I hope you don't mind. I don't know. It's just the whole combination. So UP4204, you got to tell me what those numbers mean. Maybe then I'll, I'll stop uh, associating it. Um, I don't believe that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rosarian back. Hi. Thank you for popping in uh, that you're going to be right back. Yes. And actually, I uh, confirmed today, just a few minutes ago, that he's going to be on one of our guests on Monday for Manic Monday. Who? Sorry? Chris Buck. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Yeah, excellent. I I'm just so confirmed a couple of minutes Perfect. ago. So one of our panelists for Music Manic Monday. <laughs> um, As you can see, folks, we've had quite a week. It's been interesting. So I, you guys have been on a real toboggan ride with yeah. us. Yeah. So. Mickey Wilson, hi. Uh, Lisa Milana Russo, hi. And Bobby818. So now uh, this is... Uh, um, un how I can say it? Uh, 
Let's keep it child friendly. There you go. Uh, Bobby eight one eight is in the studio, uh, so let's keep it child friendly. Okay. We're glad to have you here, Bobby. Yes, that's so amazing. What's tonight? Big surprise. Well, what is your guess? I I tweeted out a picture uh, that had um, a certain theme today. Uh, and I just wondered if anybody had seen that tweet <laughs> and could guess what is the subject of our talks. Today. I don't know. I, I, don't I think know. some of them might have figured it out. Yeah. Uh, the two alpacas. Hi, we are new to the I'm Creator movement. Welcome. Yes, you were here last uh, last night, I believe. So great to have you guys. Yeah, and this is I love having you in here. It's a great place to meet other people to support. You're gonna find that it's such an amazing community, and also so amazing to be in the chats. Yesterday, bottle caps hit five hundred. Yes, he did. Two, three, four. While six, he was on was. here, mm -hmm. and we had some really nice milestones while on our chat yesterday. Yes, so uh, definitely. Stay around, uh, people. That's so fun to watch those yeah. moments. I mean, I'm honored that at least we're now around enough that we get to have some of those. Like we, when we were on James, it's so nice to have that happen here. I was really, really happy about that. I'm at 719. Patience is key. That's, That's right, true. Bobby. When it, you got it, it is key. It's very, very true. Yeah. It, it takes time, but things work out. Yeah, I mean, you've been around and you've been pushing and stuff like that, and that's all they can do. It's, it's a hustle in a good way, you know, a good hustle. Uh, M Trunk eighty five, hello, 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 hello. So glad to have you here. Yes, M Trunk hi. is amazing too. There's like, there's some people here that's been just such great supporters right from the get go, and I've seen these people on tons of channels, tons and tons of channels. Musky Hans, welcome to the channel. So great to have you here. Uh, yeah, so since nobody is actively guessing our subject <laughs> for tonight. <laughs> I'm, I'm the same way as you guys. I'm like, okay, I didn't get it now. I'm just, just tell me. <laughs> uh, are you going to do that uh, introduction? Or, uh... I can, yep. Okay, well, our channel tonight is proud. Oh, live stream. Don't, don't say who don't say i don't who. say who you gotta show it you gotta show it first show the channel or show yes, our guest the channel uh what do you think guys you think she runs a tight ship <laughs> well first i'm going to send the link going into youtube yeah into twitter excuse and me and then we're gonna introduce it yeah <laughs> yes guys this is really happening as we speak <laughs> So. Hi, Stefan Thomas. Thank you for coming in. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, I'm go just, ahead. Good. You go ahead. You I'm go ahead. Just calling you in go, here. Uh, you're doing great. I'm so proud of you. Okay, so the guess is Northern Mike. Oh, that's a good guess. It's a good guess, actually. That's so a really should, good uh, guess. I should make a mind note of that. Yeah, and, and he does have a good channel. Uh, let's see here. Let's start off on this page. Are you ready? Oh. <laughs> Are you ready? Can you feel the anticipation? Are you ready for our guest tonight? There's our man. Can you guess who? Can you guess it? Let's see. There we go. I thought I would leave it for a second, see if anybody got it before I open it up fully. <laughs> <laughs> so our special guest for tonight is Musky Hands. Um, Hans, I believe, I would say. Hans. Hans? I would think. Now he's, he's Swedish. He, uh, uh, I believe he has. Uh, I, I will well, ask that. Like one it, yeah. of the questions is going to be about the pronunciation of the name. Got some great videos. <laughs> <laughs> I, he's pretty much since the beginning, too, I think, or like not too far on the. Uh, I, like everything, not just fishing, but like all kinds of stuff about tackle, building stuff with tackle, like building his own, some great uh, ice fishing. And I remember that he was based in uh, Wisconsin. I was proud of myself because that usually I have trouble remembering, even though he does mark the Wisconsin River here. I see I did not use this as a cheat sheet. It was when we were chatting on, uh, we did a test. Uh, unfortunately, like we didn't do last night, which I should have did. We did one today with Hans. 
by the way, talking about cheated, and Trunk says that uh, he cheated because he was in a, in a chat. Oh. <laughs> well, that's okay. Uh, well. That, that's, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that, the insider scoop. Yeah, that's right. Um, and he's German, so. Yeah, that's, that's, I figured there was blood there. Hans. Yeah, and that, it does make sense for German, for sure. I, I would, that's, uh, I'm going to send them the link. I just sent it to you, Hans. Uh, no, I got it. No, I'm calling you Hans. Husky Hans. I just sent you the link in Twitter. What does musky mean? Musky is like a, like an old cabin. It's that musky kind of smell. Like, you know, that little bit of old. Oh, like, uh, a, yeah. like a sauna. Sure. Like a black rock sauna. <laughs> Why not? If that's what okay. floats your boat, then I agree with you. <laughs> Uh, Jada Diva, too. Uh, I, great review tonight on, on, on this crazy beer, this exotic one. I was watching his uh, uh, review a while ago. And it has like a leper skin finish onto it, but it's... Uh, a bottle? A can, sorry, excuse me. Hmm. And like 13% alcohol. That's stuff, it's a stout. Wow. Yeah, out That's of Connecticut. Yeah, definitely if you get a chance, check it out. It was a... I'm actually, I was asking on a couple of the channels that are reviewing different beers if they could try and find a Latvian beer. And I know it's possible because mm. I have seen it yep. here in North America and uh, try, try and review it uh, uh, as part of their video. Uh, I think it's something, something exotic, and, yep. uh, something interesting, something different. And, and let me know if you do. When we found it was when, I think it was your first time you came to Canada. Yes. Yeah. In yeah. my father's town. In the middle of freaking nowhere, and uh, I here in Quebec because Canada very uh, province to province. Here the drinking age is eighteen, and you can buy uh, beer in corner stores, supermarkets everywhere. But there's they sell some imported beers, but then you can also go to the liquor store, and for that one uh, they sell some of the imported's and uh, all hard stuff has to be bought at a liquor store or. Uh, liquor commission like we kind of translates loosely from french and we were looking through and i'm like xenia you're not going to believe this and she came over to the fridge i didn't <laughs> yeah neither did i and they had like maybe four six packs of you know just taster packs from around the world they grabbed a couple and yeah one of them was the latvian one so jd diva said is in try and, and look for it so yes thank you let me know if you find it i'm just curious uh how far it goes yeah i've seen it since in a couple of places as well yeah uh, so uh, definitely, that's something interesting. I'm laughing here. Uh, Jada Deer wrote, uh, "LOL, thanks." I I felt it was a bit of a train wreck, but needed to put something different out. <laughs> uh, Art Morbid, good evening. Hi, yep. thank you for coming over. Thank you, I much appreciate it. Says it's he. a fish musky, Mickey Wilson says. says he oh, musky is a fish. It's a, Jada Davis says. Huh what oh oh sorry sorry uh, I, I gotta take care of something here i just realized. okay yeah thank you <laughs> we'll continue <laughs> I, on. The, I think i maybe sent the wrong way so up4204 uh, is answering my question about the numbers in the, his handle and the number is 4204 Duh. <laughs> the meaning of that number is a long story well, we ha we'll have to have you on then to tell the story because I have to know it. Otherwise, I will keep you <laughs> calling yes. Wally E. Otherwise, should be asking me all the time. What do you think? Like you it's think it so is? embedded now in my mind, and I'm sorry again. I hope it, it's not offensive of any way. It's just because of all the sounds. Yuppie, yuppie. And so glad you're here to catch. I, <laughs> I I know it's hard to catch all the episodes, but uh, we're really glad to have you here, Ar Ar Morbid. Yeah, Art of Morbid. Oh, this is a really cool movie. Yeah, we had a, a, a cool uh, different guest. Uh, we had yesterday and the day before. It was just us on, but it was so much fun that yesterday mm -hmm. we continued on like three hours and more. Yeah. And uh, the day before that, we had uh, Tuesday Tech Talk on Monday unofficial. Yeah. And yesterday was, was Tuesday on Tuesday Tech Talk. You got you to gotta check it out. Yeah. My God. And then last week we had whole different guests like Lady Borgia on PJ Party Saturday and mm. Island Aesthetics and um, Corn Life Network and Halos and Heathens and uh, oh my God. And and down the rabbit hole, you, you got to check it out. I see uh, Rosaria Buck, a uh, quick question for you both. Do you use a color graph? When you color grade your videos and pics, or do you eyeball the color you, you're looking at? 
Um, I just use what's in uh, Premiere and I balance. I'll bring up my RGBs and then I'll use the tools. I'll use the uh, um, the different tools in there to try and balance them out. I'll bring back the color a lot. I usually try to go like just above where the black will hit zero and bring it up. Usually I do between 80 and 90% balance them from there. And then once that's all done, that's when I add my color on top. Well, also you're yeah. using a Lumetri color a wheel, well, which, yeah, which yeah. would show probably a more of the levels yeah. of, from what to what you can work within. True, true, uh, yeah. So you don't have crushed uh, colors uh, and yeah. lights and stuff like that? But I heavily rely on those RGB levels because you'll see them and you can see inside and as you're moving your shadows that you'll see them lifting up from the bottom. And then you use your uh, scope, um, YUL, YUL scope, I believe it is. I always want to keep my colors. You'll notice inside there's always a bracket, and, th and that bracket inside of that is broadcast levels, and I always try to stay within those. I'm saving a question, and we're going to bring it back uh, Tuesday again. Uh, next Tuesday is Tuesday Tech Talk, and I'm going to bring it back, and maybe we can do a little uh, like a show of how we do that um, on the video and, uh, and pictures, okay? Because I think it's better off even uh, just showing it yeah exactly because color grade and color grading is so up until recently that was something you paid a, 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 it was kind of like a lab and you like they paid a ton of money to get it done it's now more mainstream and that but with somebody shooting flat now if you put in just like you know you look at your camera that's one thing about cameras and they look great but when you put them in there you realize just how overexposed everything is it's pleasing to the eye uh, but for broadcasts, uh, you'll notice anything on television that never goes to that extreme, and that's why, because I think uh, the colors get crushed. Uh, yeah, and if you're talking about pictures, uh, one thing before I, I let this question go till Tuesday, uh, you want to choose the profiles in your uh, pho Photoshop or Lightroom according yeah. to the camera that make that you're using, because uh, that will determine in what range, what are, what color gamut. Are you going to do your uh, uh, color grading, especially for pictures? Because most people don't do color grading in pictures. But if you do, choose the profile, which means what kind of camera are you using. And that's going to set it automatically, at least some of it. I see Art Morbid says here, I color correct using Color Director 5. It works good for me. Exactly. Yep. And I just bring up, once again, it's like Premiere and stuff like that. But uh, Yeah, definitely. You know. There are lots of plugins uh, that are, are great for that. Uh, so uh, you can use that color director is is one of them. Um, Murdering, hi, welcome back. Yes, exactly, and thank you so much. We had so many people come from your channel, uh, your stream yesterday. Yes, it was amazing. Uh, yeah, uh, it was uh, lots of new faces, and and was such amazing chat. Like I yeah. said, we we did almost three hours. It wasn't planned at all. No, but, exactly. Uh, people just kept coming in and in. So. And please, guys, also check out that murder ink. He is a really amazing supporter. He stream like blew up. He, like I said last night, he's doing this test stream in his truck with his kids, and all of a sudden he was away. I think you hit. Did you hit forty? Uh, I can't remember, but it was it was it was just amazing. I, even watching you, you can see how blown away you are. Uh, oh, River Ben Longbow is outdoors. Welcome so much. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, I'm gonna be right back. Yep. Okay? I missed 35 millimeter in the dark room. Gave you a sub and thank you for watching my video. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you so much too for the return support and uh, yeah you. The, so the shot you did there, the Tuesday one was insane with the both, both of you. The 35 millimeter in dark room, yeah. I see, I never got to do that stuff. I was kind of in the video in the beginning, but I could understand people who did it would really miss it. Oh, I think we have a guest here. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Oh, you got it fixed. Well, that's great. It's not like showing me on the screen, but it's, but it says that the call's working. Yep. Uh, you try can, again, maybe. Your turn uh, at the top. You're where it says for camera. Oh, there you oh, go. Oh yeah, Welcome. now I got it to work. Excellent. So, okay. Oh well, welcome. So glad to have you here. I was, <laughs> we were just kind of no feeling problem. questions in the meantime. Yes. Yeah. So nice to see you. Yes. Welcome to the show. Yeah. 
What's the weather like in Quebec now? Uh, cold and damp. This uh, isn't my profile, at, or is this my face that's coming up? No, we see you fully oh. now. Oh, this is perfect. Oh, I... and, uh, we had a. There's been some issues with and YouTube in general the last couple of days. So uh, especially tonight, there I was on some of the chats and seeing there's a lot of stuff going on. So who knows? Maybe some glitch, new one. One of them. Yeah, many. who knows? I know the other day I did a live stream when we were out fishing, and like three days later, it somehow got deleted. And I tried emailing YouTube about it, and they never yeah. sent me back anything about oh, it. No, that's that's bad. Yeah, though. they're not very good at doing that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, unless you're you know one of the top one percent, they don't even want to talk to you. It feels like sometimes. It's actually a good reminder of saving the live streams separately, like downloading them after the live streams yeah. and saving them off internet. Yeah, yeah. I usually just save my videos on my computer, but I yeah. didn't happen to save the live stream. Oh, I know I need to get a, I need to back up all the video files I have on my computer because my I have like take like hundreds of hours of footage and it just ends up being a lot of memory in the computer. Oh yes. <laughs> yes. Tell us about it. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to our life on everything we do. We got a computer sitting here with eight hard drives and uh, terabytes upon terabytes. And still no further ahead it feels like sometimes. Like when we shoot a wedding or something, I mean just video alone, I'm easily a hundred gigs minimum. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and Xenia at a, a wedding. Because I know even with the simple action cameras, like a four hours of footage is thirty-two gigabytes on one camera, on like a GoPro even. So. Well, yeah, no, definitely. With now today with high end ten eighty and four K and stuff like that, it's amazing. Just a couple of years ago, we never thought we'd have to talk about numbers this big, you know. So, uh, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah. So. I'm from Lodi, Wisconsin, which is just north of Madison. I'm currently a PhD student at soil in the soil science department at UW Madison. Wow. And I'm like studying how different irrigation waters change soil physical and chemical properties. So and I'm like applying these different waters to soil and seeing how it changes their how like sticky and plastic they are and how they retain water and how fast water flows through them. That's amazing. What, what drew you to, so this is for like your thesis for your. That's what I'm writing for my dissertation. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what, what was your attraction to that segment? Oh, I thought I knew that like, I was really interested in the outdoors and the environment. I like I always grew up gardening and I just enjoyed hunting and fishing and being outside. So then I decided I wanted to go for something in natural resources during my undergraduate degree. Okay. So I initially decided I wanted to go for fisheries. And then I like looked around and I initially didn't want to do a master's degree. So then they said like water resources and soil science as a major was easier to get a job with. So I changed my major to water resources and a minor with soil with in soil science and then um, i ended up really liking the soil science classes and doing really well in all of them so then i decided to get a phd in soil science that is so and weird. a master's and i actually did my master's at north dakota state that's what i have on this bison sweatshirt and i studied how different salt solutions change water flow and soil swelling there and then they happen to have funding at uw madison so then i went to uw madison to work on my phd wow that's so amazing we're, uh, we're sitting I, here like just taking everything yeah, in yeah and oh i don't yeah. uh, see lots of people with phds yep. to begin with and as on and then such a specific uh subject is it's so amazing this validates why we've always yes. wanted to do this uh, type I'm of interviews because it. i love the stories behind somebody because we see your hobby like with you it's fishing and that's great but there's also so much more to a person you know that and, and this is we're sitting here just enjoying yeah. every second of it <laughs> yeah like i i don't usually talk that much like i just briefly say some things about it in my video but i don't really focus on it that much. So I just have most of my channel mostly just to share my fishing adventures. Like I really appreciate like the outdoors and the environment though. And so are, it are makes you, sort of sense with where my interests are, but. 
I just really share my love for fishing on my channel. Did you grow up in Wisconsin? Yeah, I grew up. I grew up like 25 miles north of Madison. Oh, okay, okay. That's, uh, I've only been to Wisconsin, I think, once. I used to be a truck driver years ago. So you'd say yeah. I've been there. It's not the nicest way to visit a place. So I would like to always go back to these places and visit with a car where I could really actually. I know. Yes. On, on, on Sunday, I ended up making an emergency trip down to Missouri, and I just drove down there. and it's, We just, like, drove down the main drag, and I drove eight and a half hours there, and my brother drove back, luckily. Ooh. But my dad had some vehicle issues there, and I needed to go down and pick him up. So oh, it's like God. I just drove, drove through Iowa in there and and then drove back, which is a long day. You know, uh, uh, your uh, your buddy here, you know, that murder, Inc. He's excited that you're here. And he said hi, and he said, Dr. Muskie Hans, LOL. And then he wrote underneath, I've never seen a live stream stop like that because everybody was listening. <laughs> So that's how much you've captivated everybody so far. So that's yeah. I know it's like hard for me to explain the to it people simply. Like I, I need to practice because like people ask me how to explain what I'm doing simply. And like I, I almost need to get into like talking about the soil clay minerals and part stuff like that for it to be actually be understood what I'm trying to study. But I find it so interesting. Like that's the thing. We're all kind of captivated yeah, by what you're saying. Everybody <laughs> stop to to focus on what you're talking about because it's so different and so interesting. Like I never thought there is a PhD for uh, for uh, you know investigating yeah. so, uh, soil and that's water a... solutions and all that. Like it's 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 just exciting to know to get to know that there is yeah. such thing. And then, it's going to continue to get to become a worse and worse problem though as our system. We get older because we're depleting the water resources we have and we're developing all the areas which have better soil and we're continuing to have to farm more and more like poor quality land and farther right. left so we're going to continue to have to deal with the salinity and sodicity mm. issues in soils because people are going to be farming more and more marginal quality lands most definitely i mean it is what our future is like whether we like it or not it is something that has to be faced with and sooner than later for sure and like in ancient civilizations they still had the same issue but it's really difficult to actually remove the salt from water in an inexpensive way mm -hmm. exactly and like That's if you have too much sodium in the water and low salt concentration it like breaks down the soil structure still water will, won't flow very quickly through your soil so is that the reason why if you, like if they say like the old expression the biblical one i guess is salt the earth that's exactly what happens in sh in short it, it just basically chokes off the soil i'm not sure the salty earth sometimes just won't grow anything because the plants have like an osmotic barrier where they draw up nutrients and water from the soil and have too much salinity the salinity works against their ability to draw water up into the plant mm. because essentially like the plant roots have potassium in them I'm right. not a plant biologist or anything, but like they have create a gradient that will draw like potassium and nitrogen and phosphorus and calcium and magnesium and sulfur and then the other micronutrients they need up into the plant. So like if you have too much salt in the water, it's going to re reduce the ability of the plant to take up the water and nutrients it needs to grow wow this is so amazing <laughs> We're like, whereas we like if so you much. have just the soda sodium issue it just like breaks down the structure and causes really poor drainage issue and water movement issues through the soil and like it's really difficult for the plant roots to dig through into the soil because the soil is really strong and dense and hard or it swells a lot so what is a practical solution? And and forbid me, please, if, forgive me if I'm saying something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so usually to manage the, the salt subject. issue, you have to get rid of what the source of the salt says. Okay. So <laughs> a lot of times, like in Saskatchewan and yeah. Alberta and North Dakota and South Dakota, like they'll put in improved drainage like tile drainage where they have just natural salinity that's occurring from 
groundwater and there's just glacial till that has a lot of soluble salts in it. But where there's the certain salts that are really high in the ratio of sodium to calcium and magnesium in the water, you essentially have to add something to reduce the amount of sodium, the ratio of sodium in the water and keep the salinity low. And most of the time there, like the sodium issue is down like 18 inches. So it's not like you could just till in the gypsum or some calcium amendment and get it to mix up with the soil. Right. So like sometimes they'll actually take like a subsoiler or deep tillage to break it up. Wow. But well, I, I, lived, I lived in we lived in Saskatchewan. Excuse me, that's actually where our um, was my, our daughter was uh, born, and I worked in the Balkan fields. That's where I was hauling crude oil. Of course, it's not very far from North Dakota. I think seventy five kilometers or what is that? Yeah, they already just north of North Dakota. So yeah, it, and the, the, there. I mean, people don't realize that when you're hauling crude oil. There's some wells to this day are still pumping nothing but salt water. And I mean, heavily, heavily saline water. It's, it's some of the people I worked with at North Dakota were actually studying the issues with that getting dumped onto the land. I can and imagine. it would essentially leave a dead spot for like 60 years. It's got to, because it's so concentrated. Like The only way to get rid of it is to irrigate the, excessively irrigate it and or remove the soils. Right. But with it, because the brine is so high in sodium salts, it causes the structure of the soil to break down when you get the, reduce its concentration in the soil. So, mm. like, your water flow gets slow when you try to manage the salinity. So, essentially, what you could do is add, like, calcium chloride to it and leach it a bunch, which would be really expensive. That, mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing, too, is feasibility. Exactly. For sure. <laughs> Because, right. like, they just grow wheat. They mostly grow, like, wheat and canola there, which is they don't need irrigation for. And it's not like their water sources there are necessarily are that good either because their aquifers, like, into the shale or layers within the shale that they're getting the <coughs> same brine from. So there's, their waters there a lot of times are really high in sodium too. So it's difficult to just use the water source they have there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's phenomenal. I, I, I find this so interesting. Like I say, there's something to get to know that we didn't get to know through your videos. I understand why, like, your videos are more for your hobby and rightfully so. But it is nice to get to know a little bit more about you. Mm -hmm. So do you want yeah. to talk a bit about fishing and how you got into fishing? Yeah, we can talk about that now. Sure. So yeah. I, my dad always would go fishing and hunting and... I would always go fishing with my dad when we were a kid, kid. I think I started fishing when I was like two or three. Wow. And I've just got slowly more into and more into fishing as I've gotten older. Okay. And like fishing is a hobby I really like and enjoy to do. So I have just been very into it. And like now I go fishing like a couple days every week. And I think when I was in college, I decided to make a YouTube channel, but I, like, didn't talk with people that much about it. Right. <laughs> so, but I just would record, like, videos of myself ice fishing, like, videos of us catching a walleye or a pike or something. But it was just, like, I didn't have an action camera. I just had, like, a regular digital camera where you could record, like, 30-second videos or... Mm -hmm. And then I got, like, a camera you could record, like, a half-hour videos with. So I just usually make ice fishing videos then and put up some clips of that. You and I think of like two actually, years ago, I actually got like action cameras so I could just record myself actually fishing. And then like the start of last year, I decided I wanted to post a video like weekly. Right. And then it slowly got into me posting more and more frequently. And, like, I didn't try to, like, interact with people at all when I started posting more frequently. Like, if someone said, like, I want to be your friend, will you be my friend back? I would go and check them out. But otherwise, I really didn't watch so many people's stuff or comment on stuff. Mm -hmm. Then I realized, like, as the year went on, that in order to get my subscriber count to grow, I really needed to interact with others. That's right. true. And, I like, we've learned. <laughs> and now... 
the thing is though, like you can post great content and I'll only get 20 views or 40 views or something. If you post a really high quality video, then some silly video of someone snorting a condom will get 10,000 yeah. views. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's true though. Yeah, that is very true uh, and very true. frustrating. Yes. We Especially like we had, uh, like uh, Andrew was mostly posting his uh, work. Uh, all, all yeah. of the work that you see is Andrews because he's a videographer and we had only like 42, 36, 42 subscribers up until the beginning of February and it is frustrating when you yeah. put so much work, you know, I can see him editing for hours on end these videos and, and then, uh, you know, maybe 30 people are watching them. It, it is frustrating. Of course, you want to be, not that you're making videos for it, but but you want more people to see it, right? It's like any yeah. kind of, uh, it's creation. like writing a song. I yeah. always bring that example. Why, you know, you write a song and nobody hears it. Well, after a while, you get tired of writing those songs. So yeah, so yeah. for sure, it's frustrating, and especially when, as you say, those type of uh, videos get you know millions of views. And, and I'm sure you have a lot of people why. on our channel felt the same way. You know, yeah. it started off, and then like the ones especially been doing it for a while, a lot of us were banging our heads against the wall. Like after a year, and you got 42 subscribers. It's like, what do I got to do here to try and get ahead? Yeah, so I guess I can talk about like what type of fishing I do and what I fish for and stuff too. Sure. Sure, no problem. Definitely. Go ahead. So I guess I fished for pretty much everything. Like when we were younger, we would fish a lot on the Wisconsin River, which is has a very diverse amount of species because like rivers will have a lot higher diversity of species as than lakes because there's certain species that like to live in the river. But there's still like areas of the rivers that are more like sloughs where you'll have more like lake related species. So there's like largemouth and smallmouth bass, walleye, sauger, catfish, <coughs> and suckers, and sheep's head and carp and stuff there. And we and northerns. And so as a kid, a lot of times we would just sit on the river bank on my some land my dad had, and we just I'll hang out there and fish as a family together. And we would go on trips to northern Wisconsin and fish for bluegills and northerns and muskie. And and I really like to catch muskies. And I had a period of time where I was really obsessed with muskie fishing. That's why my channel name is Muskie Hans. <coughs> and I started to make baits for muskie fishing. So I like make my own spinners and I made some own some of my own wooden <laughs> jerk baits. So I've done quite a bit of musky fishing over the year also. And I there's a, was always a creek by my house, which in the last video I uploaded, I was fishing at the creek that's right by my house. And my grandma would always take us down fishing there. And when we were, when we were kids, we would just be happy to catch crayfish and chubs there. Oh, wow. <coughs> Great memories. That's really cool that you could go back there and now film it like that, you know? Yeah, but... Now I usually just go on there and fish for trout. And actually in the area of the, where I usually fish, it, there used to be a ton of chubs, but now there's like more and more trout there and fewer chubs unless you go up into the marsh that's north of our town of Lodi. Hmm. That's very cool. Uh, uh, How did you get into doing your own spinners and stuff like that? I don't know. I just got on some random thing where I decided to make my own baits and I started making some homemade spinners and I just enjoy doing them as a hobby because it's like... Like when I started living alone away from, when I lived with my dad, we usually have stuff to do at our house. So we're usually busy every night, but like some nights when you're just relaxing, like you, I can just sit and make a bait for 20 minutes and it'll just be a way for me to relax and I just enjoy doing it. And then I feel really rewarded when I make something that I catch a fish on. That's really so cool. So I probably made like, 50 to 100 musky spinners and like 30 musky spinner baits and probably like 20 or 30 hand carved wooden jerk baits. I was going to make a video on how to make one of the wooden jerk baits one of these days, but our shop is in our basement currently has a lot of stuff in it because my dad's working on making a bed for himself. Oh, really? So, yeah, too. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's definitely got some country boy on all the different hats. <laughs> I yes. like that. Yeah, so I had a really old lathe from like the 1950s, and I would take the lathe and like make the bait rounded. Wow. And then you could, if you, depending on how you cut into it, you can make action in the bait. Excellent. 
and how and how you shape it, and then you like it's all depends upon how you work your rod tip, how you fish those baits, though. And those are for muskies. So mm-hmm. like all your, it's like if you just reel in the bait, it won't have any action. But how you move around your rod tip and fish it is what gives it the action. What's the biggest muskie you ever got? Fifty one. Ooh. And I caught it on one of the baits I made. X. Oh, that's wow. a big plus. That's really cool. I caught that in Western Minnesota. So you fishing in Minnesota, like, oh, is there other the states in that? Is there one you're extra fond of? Like, I mean, of course, your home t- uh, hometown is Wisconsin. I usually fish in. I usually fish in Wisconsin when I've I've done some fishing in Minnesota because one summer I worked for the fisheries department of the DNR. We have went to the Boundary Waters Canoe area a few times there. Okay. <laughs> and we have when I lived in Fargo, Fargo's right on the edge of North Dakota and Minnesota. Yeah. <laughs> and because the Red River is like really dirty and there's a lot of sediment in it, it's most it's fisheries mostly for catfish and channel catfish and walleye and sauger. Uh-huh. So mostly what you catch there in the summertime is just catfish. And a few right. species they like gold eye and carp and bullheads, which people would call rough fish here. They're really just a fish species yeah. that lives yeah. in the river. Yeah. That the certain conditions are meant for. Mm-hmm. But like anglers don't usually desire to catch them. Mm-hmm. They're not the nice And so I would drive into Minnesota then and fish too. And they would ice fish in Minnesota and in some of the lakes in North Dakota. And Ice fishing is the pastime I do in the winter. I didn't drove crazy being inside all the time. I know a lot of people don't enjoy the cold, but I don't mind it. <laughs> I, I agree with you on that one. I used to actually, re- I don't, in the last two years, I find it's been bothering me. A couple of years ago, when actually when I was working in Saskatchewan, I froze my fingers pretty bad one night when my truck broke down. So I find I'm more sensitive to it now than I used to be. But in I Saskatchewan, like- it's ridiculously cold, bro. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! It's minus fifty in the winter. Yeah. It's uh, it's crazy. Yeah, I forget. What and it's is. like a really dry cold too, because I noticed in North Dakota it would be the same way. It would just get really cold during. Oh, yeah. It just open there and nothing holds in heat, and it just gets super cold at night. You have nothing stopping the wind if it's coming from the Rockies or if it's coming. From the- <laughs> it's got two thousand kilometers of just blowing with nothing in its way. Some of the time yeah, you got to be really careful traveling around out there too, because there's not many people in a lot of it. And you'll just be in like square miles of field. So if yeah. you have some issue, it's not like someone is going to be there to help you in ten yeah. minutes or a half hour. Like sometimes it could be hours before anyone comes by you in those areas. Still, it's not like they're built up like and it drifts so badly. Like you can get stuck. Like I've seen us go into a lease to get a load. And literally, by the time we were done loading, the, the 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 like four feet of drifts was over the road once again. We had farm tractors just on contract hauling us in and out because it filled yeah, up I, in a matter of a minute, a couple of minutes. I remember packing the car every time we left, especially in the winter, like with change of clothes, yeah. and always make sure that we have all the winter clothes there and extra water and a couple bars of chocolate and things like that. Because you're right, you never know if you break down, the car might not pass for another day. It's a lonely place, uh, some of them. Yeah. Yeah, it's also. Did you ever learn the grid system out there for how the land is divided? Yeah, by like township and section number and so forth. That still amazes me. Like they've been using they used that like two hundred years ago, and I wonder like all the settlers, the Germans, the Ukrainians, and that how they could leave like get to the ports and manage their way out there and find their land, and and it is dead on. It's unbelievable. Yeah, most of the roads out there are just built on the section lines now too. It's a perfect grid, you know. And it's weird. I, I don't. I've kind of. I've been to North Dakota. Uh, we've been there, but not fully. But like I know in Saskatchewan, you go on one road that's going straight across, and for ten miles, it's a uh, blacktop, hundred kilometer zone, and then it could turn to gravel road in the next township. For the next six miles, it's gravel, and then it can go back to pave again in the next township. It's it's it can be really confusing sometimes. Yeah. It can be. You just get used to it, though, if you're there. Well, that's it exactly. Like when I started hauling out there, and we all and they—that's all they use for finding the wells because that's how they're marked. 
Like I felt I had gone to Mars, you know, like I couldn't even wrap my head around the system. And they said, yeah. oh, give it a chance, they'll get used to it. But they were right. After a bit, it made sense. Yeah, yeah so cold sometimes it was so bad, like too. Like when oh. you said talk about cold, minus fifty. And I was so surprised that nothing stopped. Like people still went to work and work outside in oil fields when it was minus fifty. People yeah. still went to school. It was minus fifty. <laughs> oil, oil. I couldn't understand how do they do that? It's minus fifty. Uh you but know. you're right, it's a very dry cold. Like we're in Montreal here. I know I'm speaking Celsius. I'm I'm sorry for that. Uh like here we get minus 35, but that's kind of equal to minus 50 there because it's such a damp cold. Yeah. Because of the, the St. Lawrence River and everything. Like we used to say when we were in college or high school. Minus 58 in Fahrenheit for those who. Yeah, thank yeah. You, minus 50, yeah. Your pants, your jeans waiting for the bus used to freeze straight. We used to call them stovepipe pants. Even if it's like minus 15 Celsius, like. You go outside with wet hair and you freeze oh, immediately. Definitely. That's a great thing for hypothermia. <laughs> if people don't realize that, but it don't take much. Well, minus 50 is minus 50. It doesn't matter. Yeah, <laughs> it's dry so it or wet, it's minus 50. <laughs> well, you even said it minus 15, like, you know. You yeah, go, no, it, yes, you know? yeah, but it's... Uh, All it's I know is when it's really cold out in, like, Fargo, there's not a soul on the street. Like, oh, yeah. before, like, you just drive around the town and you don't see anyone out of their cars. Unless you absolutely the, have to go to the store. <laughs> that was the thing that blew Xenia away. Because when, when she first time she came to Canada with me was in uh, the end of January. <laughs> and we're, dri oh. we're driving around downtown. And, I mean, Montreal's always got that kind of nightclub feel going on. And we were passing these clubs. And I'd seen never, I'd never kind of take it for granted. Like, she was shocked. It was minus 30 that night. And still all the girls, like, you know, the mini skirts. Uh, no everything tights, was gonna look, yeah, you naked know. legs, high heels on ice, and short skirts, minus 30. I don't under, I don't know how the girls can still walk around outside with it. I don't like, know. I don't know. I'm a girl. I don't know how they did but that. Like, I really don't know. Like when I'm outside when it's zero Fahrenheit, so whatever that is in Celsius, probably like minus 18 or 20 yeah, or something. Yeah, I'm going to say minus 18. I think you're right. So... Like when I go outside and then I have on like my bibs and like two or three pairs of pants under my bibs and like three sweatshirts. Yeah, exactly. No, no, no naked legs and, and no high heels on ice. My God, that's like yeah. <laughs> dangerous. I'm sure somebody's tried it. I'm sure at some point somewhere somebody's given it a run for the money. Yeah. But Certain yeah, shoes no, don't I grip don't. ice very well either. So a lot of shoes will, won't get any grip on ice. So you fall over real easy with certain shoes. We used to do a lot of, uh, I, I, uh, well, I shouldn't say a lot. We used to go a decent amount for ice fishing. We went a lot for trout at the mouth of the, the river where it feeds into the, the bay. And we there's a fish down there. I don't like it very much. And I In Lake Ontario or what lake? Uh, no, this no, this was actually the river that feeds into the, the bay. They call it Bay de Chalor is the French name. It's the bay that feeds into the Atlantic River that comes uh, below the St. Lawrence. See, I'm originally from the Gaspé, and if you look at a map of Quebec, there's like a, it looks like a thumb. And on the north side, that's where the St. Lawrence Seaway starts to come interior, and I'm from the yeah. lower side. And that's what separates uh, Quebec and New Brunswick, which uh, and then New Brunswick then follows into Maine. Yeah, and, I drove through there once many years ago. My dad had ambitions to start sailing. Okay. And we drove out there to get a sailboat that has turned into a cat fort in our driveway. Really? Where did you go to? To Halifax. Oh my God! You really cover the gamut, the gamut for travel. Yes, I love Halifax. That's one of our favorite places. Yeah, we actually thought of go, oh, even moving. living there, moving yeah. there for a while. Yeah. Yeah, it was a long drive. Yeah, God, you guys really went all out for it. That's for sure. <laughs> Good place for a sailboat, I guess. If you're looking for one, that's definitely a place to look at. Yeah, I don't know why we just didn't get like a 12 foot one, though. So he could go like on some of the lakes where I fish at, and the 12 foot one would be fine to yeah. just yeah. take on the little lakes by me. Because like UW Madison has its own sailing club where there's a bunch of people that go out sailing, and he could just talk with them and like get lessons and so forth, which would have made more sense to me. 
<laughs> well, sometimes uh, we all like to shoot from the, the hip, so I, I give them A plus for adventure, though. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, a lot of lakes have been, some pretty big sailing clubs. It's, it's not just uh, not just left to uh, the coastal areas for sure. Uh, Saskatchewan had this obsession with lakes, and their lakes were so awful because there's no trees or nothing around them. They those ones literally look like man-made ditches. Well, I know the lakes in North Dakota were like that too. They were just basically a flooded air, low area in the landscape that would be like a mile wide by two or three miles yeah. long. Yeah, yeah, it looks like an old gravel pit that filled in from rainwater. Where all the farmers would throw all the rocks and yeah. old junk back in the day. Identical to what I was seeing there. You, you nailed it. But uh, but Wisconsin, I mean, it's got some really scenic places, though, for you guys. Wisconsin has a lot of cattle and cane topography where there's, like, a lot of where the glaciers came through and it's formed a lot of lakes because yeah. of how the drainage is. Which is beneficial. So there's a lot of natural lakes here in Wisconsin, whereas, like, in the southern states, a lot of the lakes are, like, man-made. <laughs> like, we're... Wisconsin and Minnesota and Michigan and Ontario have a lot of glacial lakes in them. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and then, like, and then if you go northern into like Manitoba and Saskatchewan, like the northern parts, they have a ton of lakes up there where they do a lot of the hauling in the winter. Oh, did we lose them? So uh, was no. Oh, so like the. Wisconsin still has quite a few fish species. I think the other day I caught my 19th fish species of the year already. Oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. Yes. How Although, much time roughly do you spend, do you think, like uh, a month, let's say? How much time do you spend fishing? That is a tough question for me to answer. Like, like this lap, like some weeks I'll spend like four or five hours fishing. Some weeks I'll spend like 20 hours fishing. It wow. really depends upon what I'm fishing for and how much time I have in the weather. Like some of my videos, I go out fishing for an hour or two and just post the video with whatever I catch. Mm -hmm. Whereas other videos, I'll be fishing all day and I'll post the video of a whole day of fishing. Right. Okay, so it varies then. But yeah, that sounds like a lot of fishing. 19 species, my yeah, God. That's, that's unbelievable. That's, yes. <laughs> see, we don't have that as like that around here. Such a like variety. In, in the yeah, lakes and stuff not... like that. It's it's more uh, down to probably like five species at the most. Ever. Because like there's creeks by me that have a lot of brook and brown trout in them. And then the there's good fisheries for walleye, bass, large bass, both largemouth and smallmouth. And sauger and catfish and sturgeon and northern pike and muskie in the river plus some other like minnow species and panfish species so within like most of my videos are shot within 45 minutes of where i live except a few that i've shot in northern wisconsin and the other states i lived in some on lake michigan <laughs> uh, what last year Oh, I'm so, I'm a I'm not I'm a little cut, stuffed up, so I'm sorry for that. But no, 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 that's no problem. We've all had those days. Yeah, it's the time of the year. Tommy Takaujors is asking, what's the best time of the year to fish in Wisconsin? Probably May through May through July. It depends on what you want to fish for, though. Like the best fishing for bass would probably be in June, in July when the water warms up. Like right now, and early in the fishing season, the fishing for like warm water species may not necessarily be so good because the water temp is only like 30, 40 degrees or like four degrees C in most of the lakes now. Whereas <coughs> a lot of the species, some of the species like the water temp higher. So like they'll need to wait till the water tank gets to 60 or 70. A lot of times in like August, there's like the dog days of summer where the bite slows down though. <coughs> it depends. Like, but if you want to fish for really big brown trout in Milwaukee, by Milwaukee and Lake Michigan, right now is the time to go. Or like there's really good walleye runs right now on some of the rivers that are happening too. So it really depends on what species you want to catch and whether you want to ice fish or open water fish. Like 
usually after ice out, like fishing for like bluegills and bass is really slow. And like a lot of places from the start of March through this until the start of May, you can't fish for certain species. So the season is closed for them. So probably if you wanted to fish for a little of everything, the best time would be in like June or July. Mm -hmm. But you're going to have to change up tactics a little bit too. Because the fish will move around and be in different places if you want to fish for certain species. Like right now you can catch crappies in like three feet of water up shallow where they're feeding because they're feeding in the warmest water. Whereas, like, later in the summer, a lot of the fish will move out deeper into the lake. Whereas, like, bluegills will always relate to weed structure, usually, except in some of the lakes, they actually go out deeper. It's really lake-dependent, though, too. Uh, Have you ever fished? I'm really bad at giving clear, concise answers sometimes, because a lot of things I say, it depends on this or it depends on that. Especially with fish, I mean, uh, it's very heavily dependent on what uh, type and what region. So I'm not going. Yeah, Tommy Tech, maybe you can uh, put in the chat what kind of fish you are looking for uh, to to fish in Wisconsin. Uh, but yeah, thank you uh, for anybody like, who wanted to fish. Like the mid, I know a lot of people come to Wisconsin to like fish on either Lake Michigan or fish for walleyes or muskies because. Like down south, everyone fishes for like bass and catfish and saltwater species. Yeah. Whereas in like Ontario and Minnesota and Wisconsin, like we have really good walleye fisheries and walleyes are very yeah. sought after fish to eat. So a lot of people will come here to fish for walleyes. <laughs> and like muskies are really only mostly just found in like the, from the St. Lawrence River by where you are. Yeah. Last through Ontario, yeah, and in Wisconsin and Minnesota and some of the Great Lakes states. So it's not like there's good fisheries for them in a lot of the states. So a lot of the people that come fishing here will come fishing for things that they don't have elsewhere. Yeah, of course, exactly. That's the bit. That's the same as hunting or anything. It's always great to go with what you don't have at home. I'm just putting up here, I put just put up a picture of walleye. Uh, Oh, I thought, yeah, they're they're still in really healthy numbers. It seems, eh? In general, like the, the population. A lot of states are getting frustrated with walleyes. I know I was reading some studies where they were saying that the walleye population was decreasing in a lot of lakes in Wisconsin, and the largemouth bass were doing better because they're. Except this year, they're usually the years have been warmer, and it's more favorable to the bass. Well, that's um, we're having... and like people who fish for walleyes usually fish for them to eat, <coughs> whereas people who fish for bass usually fish for them just for the sport of it. Yes, yeah, they're trophy fish, <coughs> not not a trophy. So but... the harvest of walleyes, like if you're catching walleyes that are legal to keep, usually over half the time people keep them to eat. Yeah, whereas with like largemouth bass, probably. Five or ten percent of the ones that are caught that are illegal are actually kept. Yeah. Well, so like, and the bass are less picky about reproductive areas than like walleyes are. Like walleyes like to have rocky substrate to spawn on, mm-hmm. and like the places where they reproduce the best are like lakes with rivers flowing into them or river systems. So like Lake Erie or. Green Bay or Lake Winnebago in Wisconsin or Lake of the Woods, which are really sought after walleye places, they have really good natural reproduction occurring because the fish swim up into a rocky river and spawn. Whereas a lot of the lakes, they just stock walleyes in for someone to catch. Right. And like they don't really reproduce. That makes sense. That's a interesting point. Never really. Whereas bass will just spawn on like mud or sand usually. Yeah, yeah. They they can pretty much go anywhere. So that they can spawn in a lot wider variety of areas. I think when we first met, I had told you that my dad was a guide for salmon fishing for over twenty years in the eastern. You told me that the other day, anyways. Yeah. I just got into Great Lakes fishing last year. Okay. This was all river fishing. Uh, it's one river in particular called the Grand Cascapedia. 
and uh, it's only fly fishing there. They don't allow any lures whatsoever. It was the kind of a way of controlling the population. Yeah. It's mostly Americans that own the cottages, uh, but they staff people from the town, so that was kind of the trade-off. The locals can't fish that river, but it also creates hundreds of jobs. So, And they're so, having yeah. a real problem right now with bass because bass are the war waters are warming. And I'll show you a map here quickly of the area, and you'll see what I mean. Like, I'll zoom out for a second here. Oh, oh you're talking about Atlantic salmon, aren't you? Y yes, that's right. I heard the Atlantic salmon numbers are really low, actually. They are. Like, you see, this river now is starting to pick up a bit. <coughs> efforts. Like, now it's all catch and release. Um, and the, the, the guests that stay at the camps instead of, or the cottages, now instead of going to take seven salmon home, what they used to be able to do, they're giving them, like, uh, smoked uh, farm salmon instead. And they get to fish every day on the catch and release scale. But you can see here, and I'll bring up Maine, for instance. This is the bay that I'm talking about right here. Yeah. There's bass coming into these waters now. And, of course, they're eating a lot of the par because they're not a natural predator to the, to the salmon. So that's really starting to hurt the numbers, too. The par don't eat that many. The par will only eat bass when they're really small, too. So once the bass are older, it's not like they're... Exactly. Well, that's it. It's the, it's the bass that's eating all the par. And they're starting to get further and further up the river. And now they're really starting to get up towards their um, the breeding grounds because there's a waterfall about 100 kilometers up that river. Yeah. And this, the par are roughly right now, and the bass are roughly about 30 kilometers inward. So they're slowly making their way up. So. But still, the par slowly work their way out to the ocean. So. Yep. It's just they, they like live in the stream for so long and they go out to the ocean, but they're still not that big where they're safe from a bass. No. Exactly. And that's the thing is to try and like control the bass population because it was never a naturally uh, a natural part of there is to try and now find a way to control it the same as people are doing with the carp out more your way. Do you have I know carp? in parts of the western U.S. like people are not very fond of northerns because they do the same thing too because northerns are a really aggressive predator. Yeah, and they'll eat anything that swims. And I know when we visited Maine a long time ago, like they wanted to get bass out of the waters. Yeah, <coughs> because the bass would do pretty well there. Well, exactly. You know, it's a whole new feeding ground, and and it can really put devastation when you start putting species start or, or introduced where they weren't naturally there before. One of the biggest things in like natural resource management now is dealing with invasive species though yeah well shit. it's a really big issue <coughs> like i know i was at the wisconsin conservation congress on monday and they were trying to do some things to control this plant called common reed phragmites which will supposedly grow in a swamp and get like 15 feet tall and like nothing will go through it oh wow well. Um, Mickey Wilson is saying that walleye are starting to span in uh, his side, which is Indiana. And the walleyes, I heard from someone, the walleyes are actually starting to milk by me too, so the males are like starting to be ready to mature. But the water temp is too low here. Okay. For them to really spawn, because walleyes prefer to spawn in like water temp between 48 and 50, 56. So if the water temp was in the upper 40s, they'd be ready to spawn <clears throat> but they also like have something with like photo period and what the light period is for the given area with when they anticipate the temperature should be right like time of year so like some years they'll like hold their eggs in or like drop their eggs early depending upon what the water temp is mm -hmm. so like right. if it, the water temps like really low right this later in the spring like they think something is up that's not normal to them definitely so like in some of the lakes so like and like the male walleyes in the spring like what i caught in those videos i posted a couple weeks ago like they'll actually go on stage up by where they spawn at so there'll be a whole bunch of males there mm -hmm. and then when a female goes up there she'll drop <coughs> some eggs and like the males will just Put their fertilization into the water. Yeah, that's funny. it's an amazing process eh, when you think about it. <coughs> and their egg just like sink into the rocks on the bottom. Yeah, 
And that's their that's their kind of incubation period right there where it falls, you know. Uh, outside was Jack Summers have a question and a comment. He was commenting on the uh, the gobbies in the Great Lakes in Saint the Lawrence. The gobbies. Yes, sorry, are destroying some fish species. And she, uh, he also is having a question about, uh, have you had experience of fishing in Salmon River in Pulaski, New York? There's a great salmon there. And he has- No, I have there. not fished any of the, I haven't fished on Lake Ontario or any of the Lake Ontario tributaries. And I know the round gobies are an issue in the Great Lakes. And I know they, some species do not like them and other species will tolerate them. I've actually heard like the smallmouth bass and brown trout and <coughs> lake trout eat a lot of them, whereas like the salmon and steelhead they stock don't eat a lot of them because they live more near shore and in the rocks, whereas the alewives, which they've stocked the Pacific salmon to manage, are out deeper. But I think they are really bad for natural reproduction of certain fish species. But okay. like with with smallmouth bass, like if you go on a bass bed, they'll attack anything that swims by it. So like the smallmouth bass will just basically like eat the gobies. Whereas other fish species, they'll like eat their eggs and so forth, I think. Okay. But I know that like They've intentionally stocked a bunch of brown trout in Lake Michigan to manage the go goby population. And they've done the same thing in Lake Ontario. Hmm. And some of the biggest brown trout that are caught in the world have been caught from those two lakes that they've stocked in there. True. And I know like in Lake Michigan, there's like no natural reproduction from them even. I was going to go fish for them one of these days. We went one day a few weeks ago, but we only caught one little one there. <coughs> what would be the place that you would like to go to fish yeah. and for what? Yeah, if you had one dream place that you would like to... I don't know. One thing, I want to go fishing for sharks and do some saltwater fishing really bad. That would be, that would be awesome, yeah. I think that's Sharks. A... Tell about the Greenland shark. Yeah. We we have traveled to Iceland. That's uh, actually one of, we had a small business there back and forth. And I don't know if you know that, but there they eat the Greenland shark. And it's uh, a tribute to back in the Viking days in the harsh winters, they would eat uh, eat Greenland shark to stay alive. And the Greenland shark has no kidneys. So to eat it the way it is, you would poison yourself. So they actually hang it for six weeks while it ferments. And then they cut it. And it looks kind of like... Um, Kind of like radish, I guess, you know, the, but sometimes they cut it in bigger slabs. And it's the worst tasting thing you've ever had in your life. It, it's literally like a block of rubber sprayed with ammonia. Like it's, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that Anthony Bourdain that travels around the world, you know, the, the, the cook, the, 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 not cook, I don't want to say that, but the, uh, traveling, traveling, traveling cook, we'll call yeah, him for now. Foodie, foodie. Food guy, yeah. yeah. And he said out of all of his travels, it was the most disgusting thing he ever ate. And I have to second him on that. So That doesn't sound very good. The only meat I'd eat that would ferment is like corned beef. Yeah, I do. I know. I agree with you. And I have a very weak stomach. I usually don't do those things. When the gross gets out, I get going. But this time I kind of got roped into it. It wasn't, you just got to think of something different, but the smell, if you get a smell of it, it just, it turns your stomach. It's literally just pure ammonia. I've, I've never actually well, made corn meat before, though. I make, I make my own sour, I have a garden that I grow, and like, I'll make my own sauerkraut from it, which do you like, let work for like a month. Yes, yeah, sauerkraut, I love sauerkraut. I was waiting for Xenia to cheer you on for that one. Yeah, yeah. oh my god. Yeah. That's German roots, that's why. Exactly, I agree 100%. Yeah. No, I like it, I I like putting it with like brats mm. or sausages, or you just take pork and you make pork and sauerkraut and pork, so oh. that's, I also garden a lot, so, <laughs> but unfortunately it's been too cold here to start any gardening. Oh my, yeah, we, and us too. I think it's the first day today that there is no snow on the ground yep. and, and uh, northern parts of Gatwick <coughs> has feet of snow. So uh, yep. yeah, no gardening here yet either. No, no, not anywhere near it, you know. <laughs> uh, talking about food and gardening, since you said you're gardening, uh, what would be the best uh, fish recipe? Like how would you cook fish? 
your favorite well, walleye or yeah. something like that. Or well, usually with walleye, thing. you either pan fry it or deep fry it in some type of batter. You can either use like a beer batter where you take like beer and mix it with flour and like puts a little bit of lemon juice and some salt and pepper with it or other seasonings you like. Mm. Or you can just take like bread bread crumbs or seasoned flour or something and just dip it in eggs and then dip it in that and then you pan fry it or deep fry it. You also can make like a poor man's lobster with walleye and just like bake it and put no, some lemon good. juice and salt and pepper with it. That sounds really good. Hmm. I love that. Usually That's usually you want a bigger fish to do that with. Though <coughs> I can imagine but it's, it's, uh, to, to be able to work with it properly. And like the little fish are really mild and don't have a lot of flavor to them, whereas as the fish get bigger, they become a little more flavorful. Definitely. So, so I like, got. and I like to take, this last year I got into fishing Lake Michigan where I'll keep some of the stream trout I catch and then I'll like just like wrap them in tin foil and put some like, dill and onion and tomato with them and salt mm. and pepper and grill them or like bake them like that mm. <coughs> really amazing now you got me hungry <laughs> and, or i'll take the salmon and i'll smoke them last yeah. night i made some smoked brown trout it's pretty good yeah um, yeah trout's got a lot of flavor for smoking i like smoked salmon but smoked trout's got that real ex it's almost like a bit of a spicy taste to it i find sometimes we do it with like brown or rainbow. He's had his own flavor to it, though. Like, like a the brown trout seem to be a little more oily than the rainbow trout, and like the Great Lakes browns are really oily, and so are lake trout. But like for smoking, like lake trout and brown trout are really good, and king salmon. Yeah, I never had king like salmon. they also have the coho salmon that they stocked, or silver salmon that they've stocked in Lake Michigan, and they're like a leaner salmon. Mm hmm. And they're not really good for smoking, but they're really good for like bake, broiling, or grilling with like olive oil and a bunch of herbs. They uh, and they're a really mild flavored salmon with a nice red flesh. I'm going to show everybody here. I'm going to share a screen for a second. I want to show you my favorite thing with Atlantic salmon. Now this is what growing up was, and then we used to pick these. I'm just going to present this for a second. And because uh, I, I usually it's mostly in the in, in eastern Canada, it's very small pockets you can get these, and that is fiddleheads, and that's my favorite thing to have with salmon. We had it since we were kids. That's kind of a tradition where I grew up. And these are ferns, a special kind of fern, and you catch them before they open up, and they grow in um, for maybe a month before they're completely all open. But if you pick them, they'll grow again and again and again. And it only grows in flood areas. So you can only, they only pick them usually is where you've had flooding from the river in the spring. They're a delicacy. We used to pick them to sell too. Uh, they're packaged and sent to places like the Eastern, uh, well, the Tri-State in the Northern United States. But uh, yeah, this is something we do a lot with Atlantic salmon. It was, like I say, a couple of times a year. Blanch them and stuff like that. They're kind of a, they're kind of a bit like an asparagus and spinach, I guess. Yeah, kind of like cross of that. It's a kind of a bit Swedish, but it's uh, like sweet. Yeah. Uh, but it has a little of a crunch if you cook it correctly. So it's good to do them with like. It's almost something to try. I'm pretty willing to try different foods. Like I'm not very picky. Uh, well, it's just because they grow around there. That's that local kind of thing. That's a. If we ever get some or hands on some, I'll send you out some. We'll see if we get them dry sealed or something like that. Like, I don't, that sounds interesting. Like, I know each area has its own thing that's unique to it, though. So that's yeah. a cool. Actually, one of my favorite things about, like, watching all these YouTube channels is just, like, seeing people's different geography and area and what it's yeah. like there and so forth. I agree. I'm like you on that, too. I really find that's a neat part. Now, uh, retriever Ben Longbow's outdoors saying that fennel and trout is for sure a great thing to have. And Tommy Stack Outdoor is getting hungry while we're talking about food. <laughs> I haven't um, tried fennel and pork yet. Fennel and trout. Like I usually put fennel seed with pork with pork, but I don't usually put it with trout. I know it's with like the salmon, though it tastes really good to put like parsley and yes. like an Italian seasoning and olive oil with them. 
Very true. Watercress and trout is epic. <laughs> River Longbow's uh, outdoors says. Water Maybe I'll have to do a catch and cook where I walk in some random creek and pick some watercress and cook it up with some trout. Yeah, that would be amazing. Some of the, I think uh, some of the recipes, like, you know, like a live or, or a vlog about you making fish would be amazing. Like, yeah, uh, exactly. Definitely. Uh, I, I some of the little creeks have too. watercress in them. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Hulk. I've been posting. I don't know. I just came up with this random idea, and I was deciding on whether just to like choose like three trout streams out of like twenty in the creek and try to fish them all in one day, or to try and fish all the trout streams in the county. So I've been trying to fish all the trout streams in the county, and that's why I have so many creek f videos that I've been posting lately, because there's a lot really good connection to groundwater and in. in Western Wisconsin, there's a lot of trout streams. Right. <laughs> so if you drive around, you see all these streams, and each one is a completely different stream, and you don't really know what it's like till you get there. So it's really fun just to drive around and check it out. Well, yeah, they all have their own like identity, basically. You know, there, there's a, a there's a good spot in every one of them if, if you can find it. Like some are not that good where others are better than that, but it's like you see cool things and you have really unexpected things happen and you like see different farms and so forth. So that's, it's that's pretty fun. <laughs> I think that's a great part of it. You know, it's exploring. I always wonder that my uncle lives in Western Ontario, about two hours southwest of, not far from you because he's southwest of, uh, of uh, Thunder Bay. And I look at all those tons of lakes there, and I bet you there's tons of lakes that nobody's ever even put a rod into, you know? Some of them are stocked naturally, and people don't even know it yet. Yeah, I'm sure in western Ontario there's plenty of lakes that hardly anyone ever fishes. Oh, there's got to be, because there's just too many of them to pick from. Even in, like, the county I'm fishing it, been doing this video, and it's one of the more rapid-growing counties in Wisconsin. Like, some of the streams don't even have hardly any footprints on them. Like, a few of them are really heavily fished, but some of them yeah. you don't see anyone else on. And those would be the ones, I mean, some of them are so <laughs> hard to get to. That's part of the reason why nobody's been there, you know? Or you oh, think... I know the boring. creek I was on on Saturday, which I haven't posted the video yet from, but, like, it was like solid honeysuckles, and it was almost impossible to walk down to the creek. Oh, my God almighty. <laughs> yeah, that makes for a – but that's part of the adventure, you know. So, And the payoff can be great, you know. I think it's good for them to keep some land where it's, like, really brushy and not very open, though, because, like, certain wildlife species and birds really like that habitat area. So, mm -hmm. like – Certain trout fishermen and trout unlimited want to remove all the brush from the stream, which may yeah. have happened back in the day when we had forest fires that or brush fires that would burn up all the vegetation along the stream that would probably control some of the vegetation. Yeah. But I guess we don't know exactly what it's like unless you <laughs> have something passed down from 1800 when they first settled there. Exactly. 100%. But it's like when they open up the stream, it's a lot easier to be by it. But the then the only issue is it just grows up to like reed canary grass that's invasive. Yes, exactly, one hundred percent. So when they cut out all the trees, it just ends up being entirely reed canary grass, anyways. Which yeah, and that's better. It's almost impossible to walk through the summer, anyways. That's what happens when man decides to always take over all the time. Sometimes we got to let a few places just leave them the way they are. And especially with the way we're losing our land, it's good to have some of those places because eventually soon it's going to be one of the few places we'll be able to see some species of plants, trees, fish, birds. Yeah. It's, it's, a, not, you know, it's a bit of a protection. I was just going yeah. through my uh, photos here. Um, let me see. This is my dad here with that guest. His last year before he retired. And that's one of the salmon. Good they got. salmon. Yeah. I read on the page, on the article it said I had sea lice into it behind the gills, so that means it's, it's, it's uh, been in the river less than forty eight hours because that's when it dies in our fresh. Oh, water. when they die from being in the fresh water. Yeah, so it was pretty fresh. <laughs> the biggest he ever got. I haven't done much salmon river fishing for salmon or steelhead, 
If I lived like closer to the streams, I would do it all the time, but it's like an hour and a half drive from me. Right. And like if I had a couple buddies where we'd just go and screw around and like go out and fish together, I'd do it more. Mm-hmm. But it's like if I go over there, it would just me be me going there alone, probably. So yeah, no, I get you. I don't feel one. like driving two hours to fish and then stand out there alone all day. It's a it's a long day. I mean, you know, for sure, I agree. It's, it's it's nice to have solitude when you're not going too far, but something like that, it's nice to have somebody around with you. Yeah. So any new, what are, any big adventures for uh, or for any new creeks and stuff coming up? Any new lakes? You said there? I don't know. I'm going to fish them. I don't know. Tomorrow I think I might take my boat out and just fish for crappies, which I was caught some last weekend in bluegills. I don't yeah. know what I'm going to do this weekend because it's supposed to be really nasty out. And then I'll probably just fish a few creeks over the next week or two and do some walleye or crappie or blue and bluegill fishing. Okay. Come the start of May, musky season opens up, so I'll probably be doing, I'll de- definitely be doing some casting for muskies. Hopefully they'll bite. We'll have to figure out. I might have to adjust my baits and so forth because of the cold weather we've had, but I'll figure out something. Inventing something new? No, I'll just have to change up the baits or something. Half blood pixie. My girlfriend caught a plastic bag the one day in the Milwaukee Harbor too. It was really funny. <laughs> I was just I was just typing L O L letter. Yeah, I was reading that as we're typing. I think everybody's got a plastic bag story somewhere down the line. <laughs> But we were trolling for trout in Lake Michigan, and they like to hang out by warm water discharges, like late in the fall or early in the spring. Right. So we were trolling up and down the Milwaukee River, which is a really big city, <coughs> and it's just full of pollution and garbage and stuff because back in the day, they just used water to dispose of things, and there's just a huge city there. Yeah. So, like, whenever your bait hits bottom, you snag into, like, rarely random things. It's unbelievable. It's not that long ago, you know, we treated our waters like a bloody sewer. I know. And, like, in the 1950s and 60s, they actually started using, like, wastewater treatment and things. hmm Yeah, Tommy Tech Outdoors, they call musky the fish of 10,000 casts. Mm-hmm. I really don't want to know how long many casts my longest fish list streak was. But sometimes you can catch two or three muskies in a couple hours. Whereas other times you can cast for like two or three days all day and not catch one. That's all part of fishing or hunting. It's all about the patience. You just had to have patience and execute when the time comes. And unfortunately, I didn't have good patience. My poor father tried to teach me. I I can fly fish a bit. I mean, I can put out a line. I can do certain, but like I'll never be a a hero into it. And I tried, but I was just didn't have the patience for it. I don't know. I I don't. I don't really have the patience for like fly. I'd rather like just spinning fish for trout than fly fish for it because I don't have like when you nymph fish, you like really gently like cast the nymphs into the hole and fish it really thoroughly and slow. Yeah. Whereas like if you use like a spinner, you can just cover a whole bunch of water and you catch a fish out of the hole right away if it's going to hit. So I have a lot more patience for that than like something where you have to be slow and really patient with it. Oh, there we go. Sorry, I lost my controls for a second. <laughs> I uh, still feel like out must be fishing. Some days you'll fish for. Some days you'll fish for four or five hours and not even have one follow your bait, and then all of a sudden you'll have one just hammer your bait, and you just have to be there. Yep. And be ready to set the hook when you get the one hit. It's like um, I did some moose hunting, and that was the same thing. I mean, moose hunting is one of those things. Sometimes you can go seasons without ever even seeing anything. And the weird part about well, moose is- hunting knows the same way. Like you sit in the woods for hours and hours, and then you have a bear walk up to your bait, and you just have to be still and be ready to shoot when it comes in. <laughs> Mickey Wilson writes, "Whatever happened to good old dynamite?" <laughs> yeah, that's another way of hunting too. <laughs> And fishing. <laughs> is is what good or bad? Uh, you said whatever happened to good old dynamite. 
What did Train Man said, or is that he talking to someone else? Is it good oh, yeah, or bad? Yeah, talking uh, oh, about sorry. somebody went. Ian went to support his channel, so uh, he's asking if it's good or bad. Um, They're mingling. They're getting to know each other's channels at the same time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, fine. Tech Outdoors was asking, "What is your favorite fish to catch for the fight and chat fight and challenge?" Yeah. I don't know. I really like musky fishing because they're really challenging and it feels really war rewarding to catch one and they're big. Right. They're, how long can you have one on the hook sometimes? Muskies, you don't fight that long because you usually use really have, heavy tackle. Mm -hmm. Like the longest I fought a f fish that I've landed was the other day when my little cousin caught like caught a 62 inch lake stirred in which we fought for like 50 minutes. A 62 inch? The yeah. longest I've caught fish for Lake Sturgeon, and Lake Sturgeon live in the get well, Lake Sturgeon. I think are the second biggest or biggest freshwater fish in Wisconsin, <clears throat> and they just like sit down on bottom and they just their biggest thing of their diet is carana man. They're just, just these little tiny flying larva, wow. but they just like sit and suck on the bottom and eat what's down there. Yeah, I would love to try it though. <laughs> I, I, I know I've seen some videos where they fish for like white ver white sturgeon in like Washington and Oregon, and, and they'll fight those for hours too. Like sometimes they'll fight one like all day. You see, that's what I find hard times talking to you guys about fishing because I know, like you said a while ago, with the species and that you have so many more. When I was talking about fishing, it's kind of boring in a way. I mean, well, we can go out and fish saltwater there, but I mean, as far as freshwater, you have browns, you have brown trout, you have salmon and then of some rainbow so there's not really like a, a whole gamut of fish to choose from that's kind of like where it begins and ends so I like think we have salmon so many... we have two there's two species of salmon Ch chinook or king and coho they put in lake michigan and steelhead and brown trout and lake trout there right and then there's like all the normal freshwater species found within the state of wisconsin so there's lots of species to fish for. Yeah, you're like Ontario but, as well, like there, that's varied. Even, yeah. in, even in Western Quebec, like uh, from Montreal onward, but I just never did much fishing up here. But uh, through the St. Lawrence, because Montreal, a lot of people don't know this, but Montreal, the city, is actually an island. You know, the St. Lawrence River runs right around it. Uh, they, there's a name for the river above, but in general, it is all uh, part of the St. Lawrence. Island. And, uh, you know, up into these lakes, even over here and that, you can get some, like, some guys go walleye fishing and stuff like that, but I've never done it. So, maybe someday. <laughs> fishing rocks needs patience and a lot of beer, Ian Boucher says. Yeah, a lot of people drink a lot of beer while fishing. Ice fishing has a really high alcohol consumption yeah. rate. Like, sometimes people would just go out with their group of friends and a case of beer and a bottle of Blackberry brandy and just sit there and... Enjoy them. It's definitely a and spectator grill. sport. <laughs> and a so basically, it'll just hang out. You get some great shots in your ice fishing, by the way. I really like some of the shots you have. That's some of the first things I think when we started talking when I was joined your channel was some of the shots of your ice fishing were really great. The suns, the sun shots on the ice and stuff like that. I noticed that in the morning it's harder to get sun shots than at night because in the night it's like darker and it like doesn't like overtake your camera as bad as in the yeah morning because I noticed like when I go out fishing in the morning like if the camera's pointed at the sun the footage is almost always junk. Yeah. Well, wow. the, the biggest thing is golden hour though. Like if you catch it into it, but it also depends on where you are. I mean, most of the times your best chance is the golden hour. Uh, Morning or but evening. I noticed like right at sunset in the where I would ice fish at usually like you get a really good shot of it if you had yeah. a camera pointing at the sun like every time. Mm -hmm. Gives that nice yellow view and even the ice it will take a bit of the glare off and it makes the ice more visible that way as well. Yeah, I noticed that. When we were talking about ice fishing, the other fish that they do a lot around there is uh it's a saltwater fish is smelt. And smelt are kind of like a capelin type of fish. I've never went smelting. There's, they should be doing that really soon in Lake Superior, though. And then I think they might be coming in in Lake Michigan at some time. Okay. I've never done it. 
He's, he's, I'm not super crazy about him, but I know some people really like him. <laughs> Daniel, she loves them. My dad introduced her to them, and now that's their food they have together. I can't even stand the smell of them cooking. They make me uh <laughs> but that's just me. Supposedly, like, they like come in to spawn in the spring, and people just go out with dip nets and yeah, like collect them. See, there they do them there, but then they use them more for refinement. The ones that people eat here, they tend to catch mostly is around the beginning of February. And they cut channels in the ice and they actually put nets down. And then they that net makes them. sense. Yeah, it's an, actually it's from the natives. Uh, the, 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 uh, I don't want to say the Native American, the Native Americans were are, the area where I live are called the Mi'kmaq. Yeah. The fishery of natives. That was their, uh, Thing. So do they put down like gill nets then, like really yeah. fine mesh gill nets? Kind of like yeah, like, like a small mesh net, like um, like a, probably a one inch gill net or a half inch gill net, probably yeah. like a really fine one. Yeah, no, it is really fine, and they'll run it for like probably three, four hundred feet, maybe you know, sometimes. Yeah, that's definitely a gill net. And then they put they you'll see them all out there. They the guys work together. There's one guy who owns everything. And then a couple of guys helping, and they're all grabbing on and pulling at the same time, and that it's a cold. Yeah, I set I set some gill nuts when I worked in fisheries before. Oh, did you? Yeah, they're they're kind of fun to set. I'm looking to see if I can find a picture of it. Smoke. Usually they use nets that they can release fish in better though in the summertime, mm -hmm. like these trap nets because they just like let them go for the fisheries. Right. <laughs> See, there they're selling. They're selling them here. Actually, if I'll, I'm going to put you, I'm going to put it on a present. A present. I'll show you a picture. Uh, present. Just bear with me for a sec. Yeah. You can see them actually doing it. Oh, sorry. So there, you can see now. There's where they're digging out a channel. This is a smaller one. I'll yeah, I see it. And the view image. Yeah. So. This is a very small one, but they can go a lot longer than that. They can have really big channels and sometimes nets like 10 times the length of that easily. That's really cool. Yeah, no, that's what that's what you were saying a while ago, and I'm the same way. It's always nice to see what other people do. You know, that's part of the beauty of this channel. Like, I know they have, like, certain types of nets that, like, put in Lake Superior and stuff to catch, like, whitefish and trout and so forth, too. Mm -hmm. I know, like, the anglers haven't... Ben particularly happy with how, like, certain fisheries and commercial fishermen can harvest the fish. Because, like, I know, like, Lake Winnipeg and Lake Superior and so forth, like, they really had to reduce what how many walleyes or, like, lake trout people can yeah. keep because of all the commercial fishing that's going on. Do you want to know an interesting fact about Lake Winnipeg? What? Lake Winnipeg has the largest amount of Icelandic people outside of Iceland in the world. There's communities there that just speak Icelandic. Their first language is Icelandic, even at the stores oh. and that. And they were the hockey team because a lot of the guys were gone to fight in World War One. They couldn't fight because they weren't citizens at the time. So their hockey team was the first team to ever win gold for Canada in the in the the playoffs. The first team to win. <laughs> Was an Icelandic team from Canada. Yeah. Sorry, little uh, Canada moment. I just thought of that. <laughs> I I like in the Winter Olympics how smaller countries actually do really well. Like Norway and Sweden and them yeah. always do really well in the Winter Olympics, just because that's where people are in, and Canada too, because people are into the winter sports more there. Well, yeah, that's kind of our, you know, I mean, we're not a big, we're a large country. We're second by mass, but by population. I mean, we're not very big. The yeah. whole pop, we're, all of Canada's population is equal to the population of, of uh, California. One state yes. is all of Canada. So <laughs> we're pretty sparse. And um, that's what I, when Xenia and I were first uh, go, uh, going out together, I brought her, um, oh, thank you, Anne. I brought her with, uh, when she was in Canada, excuse me, people got to meet her. And then, I mean, Latvia is a very small country in the scheme of countries in the world. But all of a sudden, people started messaging us all the time. Oh, I see uh, Latvia is doing well in the curling. Or, oh, I see Latvia is doing well in the bobsledding. And that is amazing. We've heard the name before. But until you make an association with somebody, it just kind of goes over yeah. your head. 
But now to this day, we're always getting messages on YouTube during the Olympics and or hockey or anything like that. Tennis. Tennis, Sorry, yeah, tennis the, life is a big thing. Oh, yeah, we've seen that the Latvian tennis player. He's doing great. So. Yeah, she just uh, she was in the finals in the French Cup uh, this year, so that's why everybody was talking about her. Yeah. Rising star. So are you guys originally from Canada, or where are you guys originally from? Or I, I'm originally from Canada. and uh, in where I What part you, of Canada? Uh, in eastern Quebec. Eastern Quebec. Yeah, where I showed you the map a while ago where the fish are coming, that's where I grew up. Oh. Like cool. all the videos on my channel that you see, the rural ones, like the windmill train and all those ones, those were all shot there in the gas bay. Every time I go home on vacation, I do a lot of my rural shooting there. So, And Xenia, she's, a, she's from Latvia. We met on a video cool. game by complete fluke. <laughs> <laughs> That's that is the yeah. truth. Yeah, that's the jersey she has on. That's for the hockey team, the national Latvian hockey team. <laughs> a lot of people these days are meeting online though. So Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. But we, we but like we weren't on a dating site or nothing. It was just a literally a, a, a video game called Second Life. It was just a <laughs> We just stayed friends. We even didn't like the game. We didn't no, yeah. weren't interested <laughs> very much and <laughs> just stayed friends and <laughs> I went over and I I went over and that was it. She like a fish, she clubbed me over the head and kept me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> talking about fish actually and and catches while you guys are talking, the guys talk. <laughs> I was trying to look in what Latvia is fishing. I mean, we are very familiar with different kind of fish. Uh, you know, I, I love saltwater fish. Uh um, you know, sprats. Spr 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 uh, they call them sprats. Uh, uh, the English name is uh, sardines. Yeah, sprats, herring, and salmon, and pike, uh, of course, and trout. And then I went and and seen the record of the catfish. Just send you a link on uh, Facebook. I don't know if oh, you can okay. open it. Uh, we'll just, the please. the biggest fish ever uh, caught, uh, catfish in Latvia, was caught in the River Daugava, which is uh, comes from the Baltic Sea, or the other way around it goes into the baltic sea but it go, flows all through the country and through russia as well and there are lots of them there even has been lots of the tales about catfish pulling kids down into the muddy waters of the river are those so, are those uh, wild catfish or what type of catfish are there oh uh, well uh, it's a, yeah those are wild yeah it's a and they uh, the biggest one go. have been caught in 2010 and uh it has it was 84 kilograms which is uh, 186 pounds big and uh, almost three meters long which is almost eight mm -hmm. feet long that's um, crazy yeah so that that's like eight feet and uh almost uh yeah almost 200 pounds big fish did you show the, the... yeah i showed them yeah yeah, yeah. Now now that was on a fish for some time too this is another type Wonder of are related to the walleyes, but they get much bigger. Oh, you know about them? Yeah, they're in the same genus, but they're different species. Okay. I think the northern pike that are there are the same northern pike that are in Wisconsin, but they're like get a little different size and so forth. Okay. So I think the European pike have gotten a little bigger than like the pike that are in Wisconsin and Minnesota and Ontario. Yeah, I remember when you started talking about baking fish, that's what we used to do with pike, is, uh, is bake it in the rocks. Yeah, I usually bake pike too and yeah. remove the bones from it. Mm -hmm. Or you can fillet it and remove the bones from it. See, where I grew up, it's mostly like when we're talking about, about browns and rainbow in the Atlantic. The main reason why is just because the waters are very, they're quite cold. As like Latvia would be more comparable, the territory to... Uh, well, the land itself reminds me a lot of New Brunswick, even parts of Maine, except replace spruce with pine. Yeah. There's no, there's no mountains. It's very rolly and warmer waters, so they get a lot more lake trout, different types. Lake fish, excuse me. That would be glaciated, too, so there would be probably be some natural lakes and like glacial features there, yes. too. Yeah. I, I, uh, I would like to go fishing there sometime because uh, we haven't been over in a while. But I would like when next time I go back, maybe that's something to kind of. Especially the sea fishing, that would be probably something uh, different because we're in. Uh, well, I would. Assume... I want to do some saltwater fishing. I know watching some of the channels I'm connected with, it looks like some of the saltwater fish, like the inshore saltwater, don't look super difficult to catch. Mm. 
and big fighters. <laughs> yeah, you could maybe catch some types of sharks too. I know some of my cousins do that. I need to set up a time to go and fish with them. Yeah, the little ones you can catch, like even in the Baltic Sea sometimes. So that's nice. So, like, you've been connecting with so many of these fishermen. Like, you're getting, like, you know, like you said, what other people do. There's another great example. You're not just connecting with fishermen in Wisconsin, you're meeting guys from around the world. Yeah, I know. I, I want to talk with some channels that are like close to me and like do some type of contest or something at some point in time. Because I don't have any kind of fun. I know I did one collaboration where we just did like we bought the same lures off Amazon and we saw who do, who could do better doing that. That was fun. Oh, what? that sounds fun. Yeah, that's a cool idea. Yeah. <laughs> Ian Bush says I'm uh, hungry cooking fish tonight. LOL. So there you go. You inspired somebody. Uh, Tommy Tech Outdoor says he would love to take you out if you come to Maryland. That would be fun. Yeah, I only have gotten to Maryland before. Probably mm -hmm. for the, I haven't been traveling that much except to like go to conferences for my school. Like this summer, I'm going to travel to Brazil, but I don't think I'm going to do any fishing there because I'll probably oh, just be at the conference center where I'm speaking. Oh my God, to go that far, you got to try and squeeze you, in. Yeah, you got to. That's like your ultimate video. <laughs> We'll sponsor you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a fundraiser. Yeah. Oh my God, you gotta go fishing. Such an exotic place to do it. Uh, yeah, um, I would like to. I need to figure that out though, and like all the logistics and everything. But yeah, I could. I could look at what like what a license cost or something and see what I could do. I was thinking about that. Well, probably there are just a tour. Probably the easiest way to do it, the same as in Iceland, where they actually let people fish. Yeah, uh, is just get like a like in Iceland they have angling tours. So, yeah. so in Bra uh, Brazil, I'm sure there's something like that. Oh too. yeah, I'm just, even some local around there. They'll connect you with somebody. I'm sure there's somebody who can get you out on some yeah, water. But it's yeah, it's probably cheaper and faster just to to book that, and then you. Have I've to never noodled Mickey, and I'm worried about having a big old snapping turtle coming and getting my fingers because <laughs> those things are mean <laughs> and noodling is not legal in wisconsin oh it isn't no oh okay what is noodling can you explain to everybody else what noodling is i think you like put your hand down into a hole or where like a catfish is like burrowed into the bank of the river and like the catfish bites on your hand and you pull it out yeah. oh that's what he was talking he wouldn't like uh, noodling with a catfish like that thing yeah definitely like i said there has been legends of uh, well legends of kids being pulled uh, down under well and uh, i wouldn't be wouldn't be surprised because apparently catfish are aggressive like, and yes, they'll eat anything yeah, but apparently they just grab it and, and go to the bottom because they're bottom feeders. So by the time in the no, bottom, scare it's kids. Like, <laughs> well, but it's 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 possible. I mean, not to eat, but, but I mean, they, when they handled. latch on, they can definitely yeah. for sure. They but got a like power. a two hundred pound cat's gonna have a mouth that's like eighteen inches across. Yeah, yeah, it's true. And I mean, they do have power. You can look on net. You can see people actually doing that, like the noodling, like he said. When those things come out of the water, it's even some of them like can grab them there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I wouldn't surprise it's not just the legend. Three mm -hmm. meters. Imagine two hundred pounds. Uh, I would be so scared to to step in the water. Oh, uh, Reese Mills uh, off road adventure. I heard Mister Pusa say he was from Canada. Where were you from, Miss Pusa? I missed you. Uh, missed if you said it. Latvia. Xenia is from Latvia. Here, I will bring up the map because it is very hard to find. It's uh. Uh, most people, uh, well, I shouldn't say most people can't pick it on a map, but it's, it is, it's a small country. It's part of the Baltic countries. If you think above Poland, it's an ex-Soviet uh, country. Uh, amazing country. I, I'm such a sucker for uh, for uh, anything as ex-Soviet. See, my favorite keepsake is sitting beside me. For yeah, that. I was just going to say, especially. Xenia was, was born, by the way, in Soviet time. The wall fell when she was... Uh, about six. Yeah, I remember tanks coming in in 1991, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we should talk about that some Yes, we should. But uh, so here, I'll just zoom out. So there's Poland, Lithuania, and there's Latvia. And this is the capital, Riga, where Xenia is from. And if you come here closer to Russia, uh, 
all going on. There's Pusha. So there's the town that we named our business after is right here. And that's because uh, Xenia's mom unfortunately passed away early in life at the age of 55 of cancer. I had just closed my business and we were looking for a new venture. So that's why we decided to name it in her honor. But also, if you look at the name Pusha, as you see on our logo, that has the house over the A. And it's upside down from what the French use. The French have it as a roof, we call it. So I was also hoping to be a good marketing strategy because French people would see our name. We're based in Quebec and think that it was a spelling error. So it kind of was a win-win. Yeah. And there is a lake there where I remember my grandfather uh, when I was little. I remember every morning when I would wake up, he would be already coming back with a fish strung on his fishing rod that he caught early on in the lake for breakfast and then he would put it on a pan and and uh, uh, fry it with baking soda and salt to make it crispy <laughs> there's a lot of the same recipes like a lot of our food that we eat is rooted in eastern european i mean look at yourself from uh, with german roots and that so when you're over there you realize that these countries there's a lot of similarities and between each country too like one great one was cottage cheese, where every country you go to says, "Oh, you got to try our cottage cheese." It's the real one. There is no cottage cheese in America, in North America. It's not cottage cheese. So. Well, then, what type of cheese is it? Wisconsin makes the best cheese out of anywhere, you know. Oh well, yes, Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah, I was just cheese, about to say that. Cheese, yes, but not cottage cheese. It's a, it's a house cheese. It's not cottage cheese. Cottage cheese is a different texture and has whole. It's just different. Mm. It's not the same. Just before I just before I close this down, this is the actually this is the birth house, not this one. Uh, this is the new one they're building, but this is where Xenia's mom was uh, born and raised. <laughs> so there you go. Thank God for Google Maps. But as you can see, it looks a lot like I say, like you know, like if anybody's ever traveled to the province of New Brunswick, it's a lot. Yeah, it looks like a lot like it looks a lot like that area. Yeah, you know, windy, hilly, but not no mountains. So Rolling kills. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> Reese's Mill of Road Adventure uh, says that it's a lot of miles away, and are you all located in USA now? No, we're in Montreal. Uh, Andrew and me, we are in Montreal right now. So that is a lot of miles away. Yep, it is. <laughs> and like uh, Pixie, uh, before the uh, uh, a lady was coming in i actually caught her on twitter before because she was saying it's morning uh and we have evening right here well the same in latvia you know it's uh yeah. getting to be an early morning there while we just having around 10 now like we were telling you guys like when we met on the video game we stayed friends and when we used to talk it was seven hours time difference <laughs> so yeah when it was midnight for me it was 7 a.m for her so i used to see her before i go to bed and she would see me when she was getting up and starting her day so <laughs> I, we kind of invented our own time zone for a long time and that but yeah so it was nice when we finally were together and got to actually see what it was like to wake up and go to bed at the same time it was kind of a neat little thing so. yeah <laughs> it was interesting um, Sorry about that. We kind of got off topic for yeah. a minute. My I, I, live streams are easy to get off topic here, unless you like really keep them to something where you're controlling it. Like you just end up talking about random things, and then you get off topic. <laughs> <laughs> One of the guys in our group, Ian Boucher, here, uh, we grew up together actually. And he says, I remember catching smelt in buckets on Bonaventure Beach. That's true. Uh, oh, that's cool. Yeah. I've well, never so caught smelt before. But I guess I have not mind trying it once. Did I've had it fried before. Like I'd much rather eat like bluegill or crappie than eat the smelt. So yeah, me too. I'm not a big smoke guy. My father loves it. He got her hooked on it. I owe him really a big. F I'm glad at least they eat it when they're only when they're together. So that's good. I don't have to bring it in the house. And like to be honest, like I know a lot of people really like sushi, and like the times I've had it, like I wasn't swept away by it. Like yeah. I like eating fish, but it's like sushi I wasn't super crazy about. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I, I mean, I'll eat it, but I won't go out of my way for it. I would rather my fish cooked if at all possible. I'm happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just me. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, uh, we had a lot of lobster, a lot of crab. Uh, they're, they're still fishing a lot down there. 
the, the, we had a lot of codfish when I when I was young. That was the end of the glory days for the cod, and it was probably one of the most famous places in the world for cod. But then, of course, yeah. the numbers were dropping so drastically thanks to offshore fishing. So Canada put an embargo onto it, which of course almost destroyed Newfoundland. But yet, you go what two hundred miles off coast, you had every Russian, Dutch trawler, Japanese trawler circling the place, just skimming everything. So okay, we stopped doing it. Yeah, but they're just swimming on getting caught there. So yeah, it's it's hard for them to regulate everything together. I know, like with the American eels, actually, like I've seen American eels caught by where my wildlife fishing videos were. And, like, the only place they actually find where the American eels actually spawn is the Sargasso Sea, which is in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. So, like, the eels will swim, like, miles and miles up rivers, and they'll live, like, through their alver and glacial stage, and then they swim back out into the ocean and spawn again. Mm -hmm. But, like, certain people have a really, really find, like, a certain stage is, the eel is really delicate to eat. And like they try to capture them in that stage. We had eels. We had lamprey eels, but lamprey. Yeah. yeah, lampreys are so ugly looking. Oh my god, they're disgusting! And you get a salmon that you caught that was once caught, like it was once bit by one. Those nasty looking circles on the side, like it's just. There's like three or four different species of lamprey that are in Wisconsin. One of them is the sea lamprey, which came from ship ballast like a lot of yeah. the other invasive species there yeah and but there's also some that are native here so like there's paddlefish by the dam by my house so like you'll snag into the paddlefish and they'll be attached to them so like a couple times i've snagged into the lamprey that was attached to the paddlefish and actually caught the lamprey oh really Those and are... they're really freaky looking oh yeah they're disgusting they turn your stomach <laughs> I don't like them at all. <laughs> they're not my uh, they're not my fish of choice or eel of yeah. choice. Yeah. Say. <laughs> well, listen, it's been really nice having you tonight. This has been really yeah, it's fun. been nice having you. Hey, I think I should go pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 we're yeah. almost at the end of our stream too. So, but it yeah. was so nice to have you. Uh, yeah, it was nice chatting with you. I had a good time talking with you and got to know some more about you. So. Yeah, and, and as you as well. I mean, you talk about your your dissertation and stuff. I mean, literally, I I forget who it was that said it, but they were right. I've never seen a chat go so speechless. But I checked on the numbers; everybody was still there. Yeah. So everybody was intentionally listening to what you were saying. No, I think the live streaming is actually a good. Like, I enjoy seeing people's creations that they make and their unique things they do. But I think live streaming sometimes is good to do because you get to know the people. Yep. That are following you and they get to know what you're like besides just like what you portray in your video. Yep. So like if someone comes across as being like an arrogant jerk, yeah, like you can really tell it that they're like that if they do a live stream. Yeah. You where if someone for so long. <laughs> where if someone just like relaxed or like how they compose themselves, you can really tell in a live stream. And I know I'm not like the greatest speaker in the world. Like I want to improve at speaking. But I've noticed from like watching people's YouTube videos, like some people are really struggle with how they present themselves, and other people are a lot better at it. I'm like Ethan from H3H3. Like if I, I can't watch more than two seconds of my own video, or I'm thinking I just uh, it's I probably would never want to live stream again. I, we never even planned to do it. It was the last thing on earth. But then when we went on James Cox, I'm a creator that night when we hit a thousand. Uh, no, the week before we did a thousand. Yeah, people were really like saying, "Oh, I love what you're doing that," because we never thought of it before. All of our videos were not in them, so nobody knew what we are. And then Xenia answers some people, I answer some people, so you get male answers and female answers. And our videos, like nobody, we were kind of like an. People were almost wondering if we were actually a person or not, or a group or what we are. So it really. I just remember when I first started connecting with you, like I just saw you had really good footage of trains you were posting. Yeah, I was in a kind of a train kick right there. Yeah, I liked it and though. That's it like what I thought of you guys. You guys okay. asked. Yeah, a lot of us now associate with the trains. And uh, well, I'll tell you, it started was was I was looking for something to do with my son. He's eleven, a ten at the time, 
and I wanted stuff to shoot. So I, I always kind of like trains. So I'm like, well, let's just go out and start, you know, going around Montreal, look at the spots, and it kind of just became a pastime to do with him. Hi, and Patsy Houlihan. The big one that we did the two hour, the one hour of trains, it's called. We decided yeah, to at nine o'clock at We're night. Part of that. Yeah, it's a long one. It's a, and uh, it was nine o'clock at night. We said, well, you know, we've always talked about seeing, like, you know, past the Ontario border. So we just took off the next morning at four in the morning and drove all the way to Kingston, Ontario, using Google Maps, and just pulling off the highway and going to all these little remote areas where I would see in street view what the crossings look like. And yeah. then we actually slept that night in a McDonald's parking lot. Him and I in my uh, tribute and turned around, came back the next day and did the other side. So that's a, sounds like you had a good time together and it like shares what your adventures like and so forth. I try to keep most of my videos between like five and 15 minutes because yeah. I noticed like your average view time frequently is like 20 or 30% of the video. Yeah. And if you post like a five minute video, your average view time percentage view to the video will be like, 50 40 to 60 percent whereas if you post a 15 minute video a lot of times the average view time is like 20 percent yeah so like posting a half hour video a lot of times by view average view time from it won't be any higher than no. if i post a 15 minute video the, the only reason why i did that one long and actually i'm breaking it up into sections like there's one i released recently was the uh kink foggy morning kingston one is part of that series there was two reasons why. One, because I did it with my son, so I said, for once, I'm going to put up the whole thing so he'll be able to see it years down the road. And the other part was it was good for uh, playlists. Yeah. So people would watch my playlist and it would run through, you know, if they did, you know, went to eat supper or something when this was running and gave me an extra hour because a lot of my first videos were very short. Uh, a lot of them in between were some of them were only like a minute, so I kind of wanted to boost up my numbers a little bit for watch time. But I agree with yeah, you. Yeah, no, that's the whole thing with, like, this new rules, though. If you want to get monetized, and, like, I've been under review for monetization for, like, a month and a half. Okay. But it's, like, you need to keep you need to keep getting a lot of, like, a th 500 to 1,000 minutes of view time every day to stay above the requirement. So... Like your live stream you're doing every day is plenty of view time if you add it up, add it up. Yeah. It's but it's like, if you just post five minute videos, you're gonna need 300 views a day on from your five minute videos to stay above the yep. time requirement. The live streams have helped a lot, I think. And since we started, minus the last two days, we're probably 30. Yeah. About 30,000 minutes. Definitely helps. Yeah, but uh, it's not the only thing we're doing. No. As, as I was saying yesterday, it's not why we started no. the channel. We didn't even intend to do anything on you. But I think what you're doing is helping other people's channels get seen and known too by chatting yeah. with people, so, and right? helping people a lot out. Of so. Yesterday and so many other ones that got uh, supported. You know, people in exchange their information, so yeah, to exactly. say, and go support each other. So and we try to keep that here. That's really the mission. Is you know, well, people are supporting each other because they don't listen to every. To me, sometimes they're kind of like listening to the radio. You know, they'll watch us for a bit. Then they'll start, like, talking amongst each other. But they're kind of like have it like the radio in the back. And then you'll see them come back in. They hear interesting points. I'm watching as the chat goes. And I can see that they're still hooked on every, pretty much a lot of the stuff that's said here. And I think yeah. that if you can spend an hour or two with a creator, we're, bound, we're going to be bonded. Like you and I know we've done this. We'll know each other years down the road. I truly believe that. You know, even yeah, when like, things start to wind down, because we built this kind of bond from doing this. Yeah, I agree with you there. And I mean, people must like it because we're seeing a lot of the same faces, which I truly appreciate coming in each night. Because I think they like getting to, to meet other creators as well in more depth. Yeah, I think it's good because you like see what people try to portray in video and then you see what they're actually like what they do as a career and so forth so well, yeah a lot of people especially like we're kind of more the exception i've noticed in this whole run lately in that like we have a business in video and photography mostly everybody if i look in the list here including yourself you guys this first thing was your hobby or a specialty that became a specialty channel mm -hmm. it, yeah you know, and not that you don't enjoy video editing and photography and all those things 
but you, you know, you guys start it with a, a hobby, whether it's woodworking, uh, fishing, uh, you like to make hats, you know, there's a million different things out there. Yeah, exactly. And like, I think if you have a video on your channel that you think someone might watch, you should just share it. Like, I know, like, I want to keep my channel mostly to fishing, but sometimes, like, if I have some other random video I feel like sharing, I'll just share it. And if it gets 50 views, it gets 50 views. But, exactly. like, people who like my content will watch it. And, hey, you know something? Sometimes somebody does that, and that actually becomes their breakout video. That has happened in the past, you know? And it opens you up to a whole pile of new people. And just people that don't live and breathe fishing doesn't mean they won't enjoy your channel either. or even like if you change the oil on your car or have something that's difficult yeah. to figure out with your car just like if you can make a quality video of it and get the get it to look nice that could be that could be a really good video mm -hmm. that will get searched for because it's like i was trying to get the tire off my trailblazer the other day and like i typed in a video right away on youtube to see how to do it because it was really frustrating to find where to unwind the wire to get it out so yeah. like some of those videos that are helpful they may slowly add up in views but it still will yep. be a video that can get you a lot of view time and Definitely. get your stuff seen i agree 100 percent. and i mean i i use it now almost more than google i mean that's where i find most of my answers is on youtube so i think a lot of people are realizing that it's becoming like the new search engine Mickey Balson was saying that was, uh, he's a fishaholic <laughs> and love this uh, channel, meaning ours as well. So it's a great combo. Well, thank you so much. It has been. I mean, uh, I consider you guys like partners when you're with us and that, you know, so it's it's, it's great for both. I noticed of there's a really high amount of fishing channels on YouTube. I think a lot of people just bought cameras to, like, record their fishing with. Yeah. And it's like... When you're fishing, you can just buy like a chest mount or a head mount or just mount a camera on your boat and it's relatively easy to record. Mm -hmm. L like your shot angles aren't always perfect, like if you're just doing it, but you can still get memories of your catch and so forth with it. Mm -hmm. Definitely. There's lots of ways today. We live in such a golden age to be movie producers for a relatively low price with a relatively great quality of shot. There's so many things available there today. The camera that I shoot with the DJI Osmo, batteries, all the extensions, the Z axis that lets me get those shots, wasn't bad. It cost me twelve hundred dollars Canadian, which is what a thousand bucks, nine fifty in US. Should have asked Farm Girl how did it go with her fishing and uh, Osmo Plus. Oh yes, that's right. She's gonna go today, I think. Uh, you you know Farm Girl? Yeah, she was on earlier. Uh. Yeah, she was going to shoot. She bought a camera like mine, the newer version of it, and she was going to take it out today fishing. So yeah. nice. Now it, she, she makes really good videos, actually. Yeah. She she has really good quality, and she just makes really good videos of herself having fun with her friends. Yeah. She's doing exactly what you were just talking about. She's a prime example of that. Exactly, yeah. You know? And I think those videos are, are the best when people actually do what they like and then film it as well. Or like for you, like you love doing video editing, so it's a bit different. But when people do their hobbies, uh, you can see it. You can see right away through the videos, you know, that that's something they're passionate about. Yep. Whatever it is, like in, in your instance, fishing or in farm girls' instance too. Like I almost enjoy the videos the most, like that just show people going out fishing and having fun with their friends and family. Yeah. Over yeah. like the people who are highly sponsored and have all these companies they work for and so forth and like go on all these extravagant trips. Yeah. Because it's like the people who just, you can tell they're just having fun doing it. And like yeah. whether they catch a big fish or a little fish, they're just happy and they just enjoy being with each other and show what reality happens. Well, I mean, that comes back to the argument we've had before. Some people have talked about is, you know, it's nice to see what they're building their budget like that. But then almost at that point, that's the reason why we're not on TV and here. They're becoming TV quality at that point. Like but some of the fishing YouTube channels have gotten almost to that, though. Oh, definitely. For sure. There's a lot of money into it now. But and like if your YouTube video can get a hundred thousand views or something on it, like they can get a lot said for the company that's sponsoring them and so forth. Like I think a few of the like the bass tournament anglers were even mad that one of the YouTube channels that's been really successful that has really good editing and so forth was able to get more sponsors than they were. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is where it's at today. Things are changing, and the, the, the bigger companies are fighting it, but, I mean, it's only going to last so long. The writing's on the wall. P my, my daughter that's seven, she's going to grow up in a world where pretty much everything is at her fingertips when she wants it. She doesn't understand schedules because there's no schedules in her life anymore when it comes to content. Yes. She oftentimes, when we watch TV, she asks, uh, can we put that or can we put this? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like when we go to the grandparents, you know, like, can we put Simpsons on? She likes that. And like, it's hard to explain that, you know, no, there is a certain time when it's yeah. come on. It's not like at home where you can watch it anytime. You get a blank look almost. Yeah, it's like, what? Like, and when I tell her to go and look on a TV guide, it's like even bigger eyes. It's like, what is what are you talking about? <laughs> what is the TV guide? Oh, you got a visitor with you. Oh, yeah, my girlfriend's cat. <laughs> what she wants to play. I see that. <laughs> Definitely let you know that she's there or he's there. Is it a he or a she? No, she's letting me know that she's here. She just wants to run around and chase things. <laughs> she likes to play a lot, so. Well, it keeps things interesting. <laughs> it's, always, I like, yeah. it's always good to have a, a, a cat will always fill a room, they say, so. Yeah, <laughs> it's actually fun to have them play, so, and watch them run around, so. Well, they're minimal, they're minimal effort, maximum entertainment, so. Yeah, I know. Well, listen, this was so nice having you tonight. Yeah, nice yeah. nice talking with you and chatting with you. Thanks for letting me come on. Oh, and and by the way, we had another guest we were trying to work out, and you graciously jumped in at the last minute and helped us out, and we were already talking of having you on, and you just yeah. like jumped right to it, and we can't thank you enough Yeah, for we that. appreciate it so much. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, I'm pretty bubbly with my schedule, though. Like, I don't usually have a set plan unless someone asks me to do something. So I just do whatever I feel like. Like, I do my lab work and just decide what I want to do. So, well, we're glad it worked out tonight. And so, we'll yeah. Get together again sometime. Have a nice night. Nice chatting with you. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. You nice take care of Thanks, everyone who came to the stream. Thank Cheers now. Bye. 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 And uh, please uh, uh, don't forget to go and check our guest channel. I have yeah. dropped it, uh, uh, the link to his channel a couple of times in the chat earlier. So, And we are also definitely going to have it uh, later on in the description. Uh, awesome stuff. Uh, fishing mostly as his hobby. But as you heard, uh, I think it was our first uh, and rare occasion of having a PhD yeah. student uh, on our live stream. For those who haven't been here from right at the beginning, um, Musky Hans is a PhD student. Yep, and look at some of the people, Hazel, uh, 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 Reese Mill, uh, uh, oh, sorry, I got, unknown, there's the name I was looking for, Unknown Trail 84. Uh, it's your first time, I believe, here tonight, and nice interview. Thank you so much, and uh, it was so interesting. My God, like I say, the the hush over the crowd, literally, when he was talking yeah. about the presentation. Uh, so you interesting. You could uh, hear the air, the air stopping on freezing. It was, you know, yeah. yeah it just was such a positively surprising appearance. And, uh, a, and a very, very nice gentleman to listen to. And there was a gentleman all around. Like I say, he really saved us tonight, kind of came to the helm, because we had trouble last night, unfortunately. And uh, uh, Reese's Mill Off Road Adventure. I'm just dropping in uh, oh, our nice. guest's uh, channel in. Uh, okay, so you can uh, go right on. Please do. And he's got and, some great videos. Uh, and check it out. So go and do that. Uh, Nielsen Wise, hi. Uh, Patsy Hulin, uh, following Muskie for a long time. Yes. Uh, um, uh, Okay, river. <laughs> uh, real quick, back to cleaning soil. Sunflowers naturally remove toxins yeah. and rebuild soil. That is all. Yes, thank yeah. you for the tip. That's true. Yeah, that's uh, especially right. for people with gardening uh, a hobby. It's a good tip. Uh, custom cards. It's a good uh, stream tonight. Thank you so much. Yeah, and uh, tomorrow, if you didn't hear it at the beginning as well, we have amazing and um, I want to share this with you. Uh, yes, amazing <laughs> and well-known guest tomorrow. Yes. So you got to make sure that you tune in at 8 p.m. Eastern because we have we have Verdict Squad, guys. 
and I hope we can keep up with him because I watch him go and it's like I can't believe he does that for three hours. This guy definitely uh, he pushes it to the max. Like I say, we're the like complete polar opposite. Every time I watch him, I keep thinking about that. Yeah, I think yeah. we'll need some energy drinks tomorrow because yeah. uh, or or something because uh, his energy it's so contagious. Every time we go his live stream, uh, it's it's just amazing the mm -hmm. way he engages with the audience, the way he he, he excites just, them. He's so exciting. Um, we're gonna use tonight for tonight. We'll use the fish analogy. It's a feeding frenzy going on. I yes. swear to God, it's unbelievable. So it's gonna be really, really nice to have him here because he did that for I think he does for three hours because he ends at eight. Yeah, and then he goes on and does Twitch. Like yeah, and before on, that, mm -hmm. he mods uh, I am Creator. Yeah, or, that's true. Or James's uh, uh, stream as well. So yeah, uh, he is a busy man, but yeah. he have uh, made time uh, to appear on our live stream tomorrow. Yeah. So we are excited. We're super energetically excited for yeah. our uh, live stream tomorrow. And then on Saturday, we might have a very family friendly guest, which I'm not going to announce yet. Yeah. But uh, if you have kids, uh, you can invite them to watch live stream with you. Yep. Uh, because it's going to be fun and very kid friendly. You can even bring the, the puppets, Patsy. Yes. <laughs> and then Monday, Monday, we are having Manic Monday, where yeah. we have a panel of uh, guests all interested in music, guitars, drums, and anything music related. So, oh my God, we have so many plans. And I have um, to mention Patsy because I seen a while ago, like, we did the I'm a Creator channel live stream. We were trying to do eight hours, and we got about an hour and a half into it, and we we're having technical difficulties. And I mean, Patsy had me in stitches. Between Patsy and and Kathy's laugh, I think I completely lost oxygen and, and like uh, blacked out a couple of times. I almost had to call nine one one. Yeah, I, I that was so funny. Uh, if you ever get a chance to go back and look at that, it's, you'll see there's two live streams there. It was the first one. Around three quarters of the way in, I guess. So yeah. That, I, I, that was amazing. That will go down as one of my most memorable YouTube moments in my life. Sometimes that. the technical difficulties have to be turned into a comedy. Yeah. And, and uh, um, by the second half of it that we tried, yeah. we, all, all of us, uh, the, yeah. the people on there, tried to to maintain it. But at some point, we just have to. The good uh, see, except for fun. two of us, there was, what, six or eight of us. Yeah. And all. And all for our thumbnail, you'd look over and all you see is the puppet in in, <laughs> in the thumbnail and the stuff that would come out like every five minutes. My, uh, one of the funniest times. Yeah, we had to do like a, a video sharing of our yes. screen because we were the only ones that were showing. Like you gotta go check yeah. it. So I'm a creator a YouTube channel. Uh, you go and find the first stream, not the second one, but the first one because it's the first attempt. And uh, yeah. you are going to have the laugh of the day watching yeah. it because it was so fun for us. I, I think we can talk for everybody yeah. that were a part of it and for everybody watching. So you want to, you need to laugh, go over and check it out. That's right, Patsy Lance says, too bad they couldn't see us. I agree exactly. But yes. I think they were busting up just listening to us. But if they could have seen us, what? It, well, it would have been perfect. It would have been the perfect yeah, shot. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> uh, it's too bad it went that way. But I think we tried to do um, to make the best out of it, yeah. and, and and at least people got some good. And we hope to have you on uh, sometime, Patsy. Yes, I know it's hard to get to uh, yeah. you, but uh, we would love to. Yeah, high demand. Uh, Reese's Mill Off Road uh, Adventure is going to be tomorrow on. Excited for Verdict Squad to be on. So can't wait to see uh, the live stream tomorrow. Come on, definitely. Uh, mm -hmm. UP4204. Uh, his friend, Mo Mr. Colton Presley, is a huge music fan. Yes, we will check him out. Definitely. Uh, yeah. And yes, please tell anybody who's interested in music. Uh, I mean, who's not interested, yeah. really? But uh, uh, especially like all the talk around it, uh, please uh, come and check Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern. There's going to be lots of talk about that and uh, several guests. Uh, have a good night, well. Mickey. Thank you so much for tuning in with us. It's, it's, it's always great to have you. It's always nice to see new ones coming in and keep coming back. Yeah. And Terrell, once again, like people like that right from the get-go. That's just one of our most awesome supporters we could have ever ask for. Nelson Wise, wow, this is great. I enjoy seeing you all streaming so often. Nelson's a great motivator. We had a fun. I was there the night. I was there either for your Vic, your 1K celebration or when you hit 1K. I think that was the first stream I caught of yours. We had a good night that night. Lots of people. I like that one. I like that channel where it's, everybody's just like supporting each other. Positive. Like I feel we have here. We don't 
have all the drama, the arguments, and not that it hits all the channels all the time, but I think we've been pretty lucky here, and hopefully we can keep it that way. And uh, don't forget to come back, uh, like and comment uh, on the video after it's uploaded. Yes, uh, please. I mean, like, let everybody know that you have been on the live stream, so people see you and uh, go and check your channel as well. That's as I was saying yesterday. That's a great small business card yep. to throw out uh, as a bait. Again, yep, a fishing, that's right. Fishing pond. <laughs> and you will grow from it. It's amazing how people go and check these ones out, and they'll literally they'll go down the list because they know we're part of the art. You know uh, we're that we came from the I'm creator movement and stuff like that. So you get people from there coming over and checking out. So yeah, that's yeah. how we uh, get a lot, a lot of supporters as well. How we connect with people is by checking other people's comments and just seeing yeah. what kind of channels are there. We can, if we are interested in them, we'll go check them out. So, uh, sure and for us, it's been that. in the, within the I'm creator movement for a while now, please go back and take a look at the list sometimes, see some of the new, I, I checked yesterday and I think they're up to 2,400 or something like that. Yes, it's been growing. There's been a yeah. lot, a lot of new uh, faces, new channels joining in. Yeah. Uh, that's amazing. Uh, we always like to see that. Uh, it's great. Uh, I'm Creator has been a great help, I think, for lots of the channels to start off on the right foot. Yep. And support them like they supported us. I mean, we can always use more people on our channels and for them they're waiting for us to give them a boost like we got for the ones that got a that we got a boost for in the beginning we um, learned how to play banjo reese excellent yeah banjo is hard if you already play guitar because your fingers always want to go back to the chords it's the hardest part is that it's like really like two different languages but they say once it clicks it, it really clicks your father play banjo? Like, no he wanted to he'd yeah. love to yeah, I, I would love to. <laughs> I, know I would love to play it. guitar. Yeah, like the difference between guitar is where you're mostly like, especially in country music, where you're strumming or picking, you're picking just two notes. Where banjo, you pick, you take the chord instead of a strum, you put as many notes almost as you can between where you would usually strum. So it, it's quite would a it be easier as a beginner to do, uh, for me, for example, a, a acoustic guitar or banjo? Like have somebody who doesn't know how to play. Well, at that point, then it's easier because you're not familiar. It's like learning in a language where you don't yeah, have any Yeah, but which one would be easier, acoustic guitar or banjo? I, I'd say guitar. Banjo is banjo's a hard yeah. instrument, but a rewarding one. Please stick with it. I think I, I hope one day to be on your channel and see you playing. So. I always say, have this picture that I would play acoustic guitar by the fireplace on the beach at night xenia does this a lot <laughs> her life is like those cards you see on facebook <laughs> she, she i visualize them. things a lot no and i yeah. would sing and i would sing and play acoustic guitar and and then i would have soup in a can <laughs> on the fireplace and on you know those black uh, how are they called there um uh, the black pots that people put yeah, on, yeah. A, on a fireplace, a cauldron. Cal okay. Yeah, black right. cauldron having yeah. a nice fish soup. There's and a European then, side coming in using cauldron, which to us sounds like witches and brew. It we did. Like... Actually, all the time we were talking about the recipe, so I was thinking about the amazing fish soup we always used to have when we would camp by the lakes uh, with my family. Uh, we they would go fishing, and then we would have this uh, Russian fish soup, which basically you 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 boil it, and then you take out fish and then you boil another one and there's always like changing fish fish like and, and it's boiling all then all night basically and at the end of the night you have this amazing broth from whatever different kind of fish is there and you just add the meat you had saved from before on top of it and it's so flavorful you can't get it like doing it just on the stove and it's made in cauldron on top of the fireplace while playing a guitar we call them Dutch ovens where I live. Exactly. That's what we would call it, too. No. <laughs> yeah, Jesus, too. Same as, like, we call them caskets here. They call them coffins. Everything always. Like, all of our childhood nightmares are based on European names for stuff. Yeah, yeah but... <laughs> no, you're not thinking of different things. You're right on. It's it's a Dutch oven. You're yeah, on. Right? It's, it's this thing yeah. that looks like a black pot, and, and you hang yeah. it over the... Um, the tree tree trunk or something yeah uh, okay i mean you just like this hard it's better to be a drummer so you can still hang around musicians yeah exactly 100 percent right <laughs> so yeah, yeah uh so from uh fish to food uh, yep. and witches and uh, uh cauldrons cauldrons 
and all the rest. Thank yeah. you so much for coming over. Have a great night, uh, guys. Come back tomorrow for Verdict Squad. Uh, yeah. Be creative. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Have a great night.